beloved one i hope you are doing well i want us to take a short reading from the book of psalms chapter 127 it says if god's grace doesn't help the builders they will labor in vain to build a house if god's mercy doesn't protect the city all the centuries will circle it in vain it's really a senseless to work so hard from morning till late at night toiling to make a living for fear of not having enough now god can provide i want you to see this it says god can provide for his devoted lovers even while they sleep now this tells us of the great things that we enjoy anytime we come into God's presence. It tells us of the blessings we enjoy anytime we are with God. And then we can do this through prayer, through the word of God, and even as we are about listening to this. So I want us to do something. We are going to like this video. So then please hit on the like button if you have not done so. This helps YouTube recommend this video out there to anyone so everyone can have access to it also by doing this you help in the spread of the gospel and of the good work of this channel then don't forget to leave a comment in that comment section hit on that subscribe button if you haven't done so and you are new here and then get on to the notification bell and do us the favor of tapping on it too you were blessed son. exodus 35 please very quickly there is nothing we do that is outside the jurisdiction of the kingdom. I have studied how um, the tabernacle, there are two major building or two major ministry, capital ministry projects that were executed in scripture. One was the building of the tabernacle. Hallelujah. When Moses began to build the tabernacle. The second was the building of the temple when Solomon built. And both of them raised funds and i wanted to check from scripture how did they acquire the resources to build the kingdom of god hallelujah because there is a pattern in scripture and every time you follow the pattern of scripture god is committed to back you but every time you go outside the jurisdiction of scripture there is no divine backing exodus 35 we'll read verse 4 and 5 21 and then the anchor scripture for this project will be verse 29 so let me read very quickly thank you jesus and moses spoke unto the congregation of the children of israel saying this is the thing which the lord commanded stop so the first thing is that the lord commanded hallelujah whenever you do anything that is commanded you will enjoy the backing of heaven hallelujah whenever you do anything we do not do anything in this place no matter the pressure except it is commanded hallelujah verse 5 take ye from among you an offering unto the lord whosoever is of a willing heart this is a key point whosoever is of a willing heart there is no compulsion in the things of the kingdom any system that puts pressure and compulsion on people is a devilish system hallelujah whosoever is of a willing heart let him bring it an offering unto the lord gold silver and bronze that was their commodity of transaction hallelujah verse 21 jump to verse 21 very quickly 21 and they came everyone whose heart stirred him up and everyone whom his spirit made willing and they brought the lord's offering whose offering not a man of god's offering they brought the lord's offering it says to the work of the tabernacle of the congregation for all his service and for the holy garments verse 29 this is where the anchor scripture is and we'll pray and we'll officially launch it hallelujah thank you jesus let's read together it's projected one to read the children of Israel brought a willing offering unto the Lord. Every man and woman whose heart made them willing to bring for all manner of work. Stop. How many? All manner of work. So it is a system that is consistent for any work that is done in the kingdom. Is that in your Bible? It says they brought an offering for all manner of work which the Lord had commanded to be made by the hand of Moses. So the project is executed through the vision of a man.
but it is a command of the Lord. Are you seeing that? It says it is commanded, but it is to be made, to be brought forth, to be strategized through the hand of Moses. Hallelujah. So we are launching it this night. All our members, kingdom financiers, all the people that have been blessed from this ministry, other ministries that have been blessed, other people around. And um, we have made contact with a lot of people. There are a lot of kingdom financiers that have been seeking for an opportunity to just bless the house. Hallelujah. I've told you a big secret when we're talking about kingdom economics. Money does not make ministry. Impact makes ministry. When you bless people, they will be too grateful. The Bible says there's no time we would have, would have read something very, very um, interesting. Let's look at 36. Just, just 36 verse 3. 36 verse 3. Let me show you how much because of the impact of the vision they remembered how that god used moses to bring them out of the nation of egypt you know and all of these things he says and they received of moses all the offerings which the children of israel had brought for the work of the service of the sanctuary to make it withal and they brought yet unto him free offerings every morning verse 5 verse 5 he says, and they spake unto Moses, Bezalel, and all of the people. He says, saying, the people bring much more than enough for the service of the work, which the Lord commanded to make. Six. And Moses gave commandment that they caused it to be proclaimed throughout the camp, saying, let neither man nor woman make any more work for the offering of the sanctuary. So the people were even restrained. There is a way people can become so impacted by the grace upon a ministry that they will commit their all. And this is the assurance that the Lord gave me. Hallelujah. So rise up on your feet, everybody, even as we officially launch this. Praise the Lord. Please rise up, everybody who believes in what God is doing. Just stretch your hands towards me and let's pray in one minute and say, Lord, Project 10,000 will be a huge success. We call forth all koinonia people, all our members, all kingdom financiers, all those who love the work of the kingdom. In the name that is above all names, we call them forth for the work of the Lord for the next phase of this ministry. We thank you. There are angels that signify this word. There is a backing from the throne. Kabo Shala Katari we're enjoying abundance, supply beyond imagination to do the work of the Lord in excellence and according to the pattern that has been delivered unto us. Go ahead and pray and prophesy and say, Lord, you're stirring up the hearts of willing givers across this nation, across the nations of the world. People are giving their best, they are giving their all. We prophesy and I'd like you to speak, say, Lord, a hundredfold return is returning to them. There are testimonies of miracles. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Now, there is an official account number. I want you to know that we're a very responsible ministry. Hallelujah. There is an official account number every seed this is god's money every seed we don't have any proxy people to give through every seed is communicated through our official ministry account numbers praise god and the only other person that is authorized is the treasurer hallelujah if you're giving in cash or your loved ones please I, I, i'll tell you how you'll be part of this now praise god you just write project ten thousand and you just drop it or if you're giving preferably in fact we highly recommend you just go to the bank and make deposits this this is our official account number hallelujah as a ministry praise the lord you can have it please invite your loved ones this is a vision that is worth being part of praise the lord we are excited about what god is doing and we are happy it's a privilege for us to be part of what god is doing all our, our members across Facebook, there are so many people. We just need 10,000 people. I know that there will be a lot more. Hallelujah. 
10,000 people who will commit themselves and say, Lord, this is my contribution for the work of the Lord. I am giving because I love the Lord, not because any man is cajoling you. People threaten people with curses and blessings. It's unscriptural. The Bible says a willing heart. A willing heart. Hallelujah. Don't be emotional about it. Invite your friends, your loved ones, your pastors, your churches. Take the word. Hallelujah. We trust that God is going to do great things. Okay, the treasurer is Debbie. Where is Debbie? Come out quickly. Where is she? Treasurer, where are you? Hallelujah. This is the treasurer. Praise the Lord. So any other remissions for her, you just give her or you drop it in the offering basket. Hallelujah. So every time we talk about Project 10,000, bless you, my dear. This is what we are talking about. We are just talking about a kingdom financing project. We believe that there are many people that seek opportunities to be a blessing to the work of the Lord. Hallelujah. You are financing us to take the value system of the kingdom to the ends of the earth. Believe me, what you are seeing is only a rehearsal. By the time God is done with us, he will give us wings. And we will ride in a way that the nations will know that God has ambassadors. Praise the Lord. Father, we bless you. Thank you because you are the finger that has been behind this ministry right from day one. I thank you, Father, because that which you have declared in the secret place, we have declared upon the mountaintop. You are the hand that has sponsored all our crusades in time past. You are the mysterious hand that has taken this ministry through dimensions of grace. You have supplied finance. We have never lacked finance to do the work of the kingdom. And Lord, I thank you because there are angels that have been sent. The same mysterious angels that have taken our messages to the ends of the earth. Broken language barrier, tribal barrier, denominational barrier. Right now as your servant, even as Solomon stood before the temple, I stand and Lord in the name of Jesus, in the presence of your people, I declare that as we launch this project, let the angel that has been assigned to carry this vision, begin to move with this vision across churches we call for the kingdom financiers that have been anointed to support the work of the kingdom we thank you because there is overflowing abundance we wrap this vision in the blood of jesus it will not be thwarted by fraudulent people it will not be thwarted by wicked people there are willing hearts to give and Lord, we thank you because a time will come we will even have to stop the people and say the resources are so much. Therefore, we thank you. In the name that is above all names, we dedicate and we launch this project right now, Project 10,000. We give you a voice in the spirit. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, like the scrolls that the prophet saw flying, we command and we instruct that a voice be given to you in the realm of the spirit. You will go across the length and the breadth of this country. And many who love the Lord will be part of this. We launch it right now in the name of the Father. We launch it in the name of the Son. We launch it in the name of the Holy Ghost. For the advancement of the kingdom. For the saving of souls. For the redemption of destinies. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Give God a big praise. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So invite as many, inform as many, sit down, God bless you to join in this project and you will be greatly blessed. Hallelujah. Thank you so much. Thank you for being a part of what God is doing. Let's get to the word. Hallelujah. Can you pray in tongues in one minute? We have to get into the business of the night. Shebrakato zalakati alabako rato sabredesh. Rekete pradus gibrendi jelakriya de dabosh. Open our eyes, O oh God, that we may see, our hearts that we may understand. All we want is you. Take over. Take over. To Sing it one more time from the depths of your heart. All we want is you. Take over. Take over. Till we are consumed by nothing. Nothing. 
It's a powerful series. We are going to take a series on spiritual warfare. I want your eyes, your ears to be open. I want to open you up to something amazing that will take you to another dimension of authority. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. The devil is in trouble. Believe me, the devil is in trouble. At the end of this series, you will catch fire. Something will happen to you. The miracles that people celebrate, you will see the dynamics of their operation from the realm of the spirit. And I told you, it's our desire here that the least among us be as mighty as David. Gone are the days when one superstar comes and begins to do a lot of religiosity. God is pouring out his spirit through the word. We thank you, Lord, in the name of Jesus. The weapons of our warfare, part one. The weapons of our warfare, part one. Open our eyes, oh God. Show us deep things in the spirit. Hallelujah. Second Corinthians 10 from verse 4 to 5, 4 to 6. That will be our theme for this series. Hallelujah. And in this series, I'll be dealing with five things. Please write quickly. Number one. We'll be discussing on the reality of the spirit realm. I'll be opening us up to the reality that there is a real realm called the spirit realm. The earth realm is not all that there is. Hallelujah. The reality of the spirit realm. Number two, we'll be discussing the mystery of wickedness. The Bible says the whole world lieth in wickedness. Hallelujah. We'll be discussing the mystery of wickedness. Number three, we'll be talking about the realms and jurisdiction of satanic operations. The realms and the jurisdiction of satanic operations. Number four, we'll be dealing with the weapons of victory. What are the spiritual arsenals that have been made available to the believer on account of the finished work of Christ? to keep the devil where he belongs and the last discussion will be commanding victory semicolon or colon spiritual laws and rules of engagement commanding victory colon spiritual laws and the rules of engagement I'll take it again very quickly the reality of the spirit world our discussion will be around these five areas. We must not take them one by one, but we will touch on them. For this curriculum, I told you this is a school. So this is the course outline. Praise God. The reality of the spiritual world, the mystery of wickedness. Why wickedness? What is Satan really looking for? When people are destroyed, what does he want? Why the perversion? Then realms and jurisdiction of satanic operation. That there are laws in the realm of the spirit. Things don't just happen. Hallelujah. People don't just get into demonic oppressions. There are realms. There are jurisdictions. Please, this is important. I want you to listen. You can never command power in the spirit. When you are not aware of the Bible says. Do not be unaware of the devil's devices. The Greek word there is stratomai, his strategies, his methodology and his ways of doing things. It's not a mystery. Hallelujah. The Bible is a compendium of the activities of Satan through dispensations. So that when we, are about, when we study it, we are able to understand. And with that knowledge, we will have the authority to keep him where he belongs. Hallelujah. Psalm 66 verse 3. It says, how awe-inspiring are your ways. Through the greatness of thy power shall thy enemies submit themselves. And this power comes through knowledge. Hallelujah. The Bible says, according as his divine power hath given us all things that pertains unto life and godliness. How? Through the knowledge of him that has called us into glory and virtue. So we we'll talk of weapons of victory. The spiritual arsenals. Listen, listen, look at me everybody. The Bible says, Jesus speaking, it says, I will give you the keys of the kingdom. Everybody say keys. 
He didn't say, I will give you a key. He didn't say, I will give you the key. There are many spiritual arsenals. And all of them serve different purposes in the realm of the spirit. Are you getting me? There is a jurisdiction of the operation where the anointing functions. The anointing, as we know, doesn't just do everything. This is not heresy. There is the jurisdiction of the blood. There is the operation of the name. There is the power of the cross. There is the power of agreement. There are many spiritual arsenals. Are you following me now? And if we understand, whenever you see situations, at once you can read the handwriting on the wall and you know what diagnosis you can give and what recommendation you can give. Are you following me now? When you step into a family and you see an oppression of darkness and they are praying and fasting about it and it does not leave, with your spiritual intelligence, you know what spiritual tool to bring that will cause the devil to bow. This is what spiritual maturity is all about. Hallelujah. The Bible says, What seest thou? Zechariah 1 from verse 18. Don't turn there. It says, And I saw four horns. How many horns? four horns he says did are the horns that have lifted up themselves against jerusalem against israel and judah these are the horns that lift up themselves symbols of authority satanic forces stationed across territories the bible says so that no man will lift up his head he said but i have sent carpenters these carpenters have been sent to terrorize these horns hallelujah the carpenters are not men of God. The carpenters are citizens of the kingdom. Men and women, the saviors that the Bible says in Obadiah 21 that will arise from Zion and will judge the Mount of Esau. It's time for many of you to go into your homes with spiritual intelligence. No longer will you be confused. Things are happening and you just know the blood of Jesus or the power of the Holy Ghost or Holy Ghost fire. And after saying it three times, nothing happens and you are short of spiritual arsenals that you'll be equipped. The Bible says, he that escapes the sword of Elisha, Jehu will strike. There are spiritual laws. Hmm. Hallelujah. It is only based on that intelligence that when men are saying there is a casting down, you will say there is a lifting up because you understand the way the realm of the spirit works. Hallelujah. So part one we'll be considering, let's just start wherever we can stop. Praise God. Paul began to comment, he began to admonish the Hebrew church. Hebrews chapter 5, please, from verse 14 or from verse 11. Hebrews 5 from verse 11. And then we'll go down to chapter 6, verse 3. Paul was busy speaking to the people and he was disturbed because he wanted to communicate certain deep spiritual things. Let's read verse 11. It says... Of whom we have many things to say and hard to be uttered, seeing that ye are dull of hearing. Verse 12. It says, for, for when for the time ye ought to be teachers. That means I expect you people to have risen to a dimension that you can begin to communicate these truths that you understand. It says, ye have need that one teach you again. The first principles of the oracles of God. It says, and have become such that have need of milk. That means there is milk. Are you getting my point? And there is strong meat. Hmm. Verse 13. For everyone that uses milk is what? Unskillful. You are a Christian. You are born again. You are filled with the Holy Ghost. But you are unskillful. That means you do not have sufficient intelligence to make use of the spiritual arsenals as at when due to the degree of their jurisdiction. The Bible says you are unskillful in the word of righteousness for he is a babe. 14. But strong meat, kapalakata, belongeth to them who are of full age, even those who by reason of use have their senses exercised to discern. That means when they see things, they don't judge the way men judge. They judge in the light of an information that they have about the realm of the spirit. When you see somebody terrorizing your family, you know that no, you are judging. 
This is not about my uncle or my auntie. There are powers in the heavens and you know how to be able to bring victory. Not blaming uncle or auntie. When you see your father destroying you, you know that no, my father is a good man. There is something the Bible says, any man who just sees his neighbor and says he's my neighbor that is causing is a babe. He does not have sufficient spiritual intelligence. 6 verse 1. That's the end of verse five, chapter 5. 6 verse 1. He said, therefore, on account of this need that I've created, on account of the fact that there is an urgency in the spirit for you to rise from the realms of being babes, being taught certain, certain things in the realm of the spirit that will not make you carry authority. Can I tell you something, brothers and sisters? I say this and I say it with all humility. There are many teachings in the body of Christ that will make believers remain babes. And if we remain in that realm, we will die although we are confessing that we are Jesus Christ. We are, we are the disciples of Jesus Christ and so on and so forth. There are many teachings that are good, but if you do not rise, they become misleading. Because, see, this is why many believers stand helpless in the face of Satan. And we go back to we the men of God. And the members come and ask us what is wrong. And we keep giving all kinds of crafty and childish explanations. The realm of the spirit is only threatened by the degree of light you carry. Therefore, leaving the principles of the doctrine of Christ, let us go on to perfection. That means there is a higher dimension. Thank God for the things we have studied. Thank God for the fact that, oh, you are this and that. Thank God for these foundational things. But Paul is saying, if we remain at this level, the sophistication of the realm of the spirit requires that there is progressive growth in understanding. If we must be ambassadors, there are people sick with cancer. Men of God have prayed and prayed and prayed. The people have died. There are people with HIV. Headaches have been healed. We have risen people from wheelchair. But why is it that some sicknesses seem to bow? There are laws we need to learn. Otherwise, those people will never be healed. Hallelujah. Let us go on to perfection. Not laying again the foundation. Everybody say foundation. Amazing that most of, most of the teachings we brag about in the church and call Rema, the Bible calls it foundation. Foundation of repentance from dead works and of faith towards God, verse 2. And of the doctrine of baptisms and laying on of hands. Power! The Bible says it is even, even that realm. Laying on of hands that we believe is the crux of success in ministry. The Bible says it is a foundation. Hmm. And of resurrection of the dead and of eternal judgment. Verse 3. And this is our prayer this night. And this we will do if God permits. Hallelujah. So I'd like you to pray right now in one minute and say, Lord, I refuse to remain at the level of knowledge that I've had. I contend for higher levels of revelation. There is a generation waiting for me. My family members are counting on the revelation I will get tonight. The devil is destroying people. There are territories that are dying. And if we do not contend, there are churches that will pack up and die for nothing. If we do not step in in these dimensions of spiritual understanding to know when to launch attack on the works of darkness and establish what Christ has done. Pray from the depths of your heart. We're tired of the status quo. There's got to be more than this. Tired of the status quo. There's got to be more than this. There's got to be more. Got to be more. There's got to be more than this. For desperate people do desperate things. And we press in need. Gotta be more, gotta be more. Help me say, gotta be more than this. It's gotta be more, gotta be more. It's gotta be more than this. We are the desperate people. We want more, more, Lord. We are desperate people. We want more, more. Lord, we are 
I'm tired of the status quo. It's gotta be more than this. We're tired of burying people who should not die. We're tired of watching our families run away to herbalist as though the word of God is a lie. We are in this series. We are exploring to find answers. What is the answer, oh God? Why we have prayed and fasted about issues and it has not changed? Why am I still being pressed in the night although I'm born again? Why is it that I'm tightening, I'm giving and the doors are not opening? Can you pray for one minute? We're tired of the status quo. There's got to be more than this. We're tired of the status quo. It's gotta be more than this. It's gotta be more, gotta be more. It's gotta be more than this. It's gotta be more, gotta be more. Gotta be more than this. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Please be seated. My spirit is fired up this night. Hallelujah. The first thing I want you to know tonight, brothers and sisters, is that we live in a world that is controlled from the realm of the spirit. Never forget this for as long as you live. I began that teaching in the teaching, give me this mountain. I began to explain to us the spiritual dimension of life. Life is everything spiritual. Whether you believe it or not is irrelevant. Hallelujah. The Bible says in Hebrews chapter 1, it says, now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. It says, for by it the elders obtain a good report. The Bible says, through faith, we understand that the walls, not one, the walls, systems were made. Hallelujah. Are you following me now? I need you to know that the realm of the spirit is real. Whether you are an atheist, whether you are whatever, is irrelevant. There is a real realm that birthed this physical realm. That realm was in existence before Genesis 1 verse 1. The real spiritual realm with inhabitants. Praise the Lord. There are realms beyond that which the mortal eyes of man can physically see. That they are not seen does not mean they do not exist. Ephesians chapter 6. Generally, theologically speaking, the book of Ephesians is considered by theologians to contain the highest spiritual truths that um, summarizes the entire scope of the activities of man. Hallelujah. From chapter 1 to chapter 3, in the book of Ephesians, it tells us how and, and brings us to the understanding of our right and privileges in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. Reminds us that we are seated with Christ. The realities of redemption, the things that have been wrought for us on account of what Christ has done. Hallelujah. And so it lets us see that the entire journey of the believer is hinged upon the platform of Christ's finished work. That is on account of his death, his burial and his resurrection that any other thing that will happen in the kingdom will happen. So chapter 1, 2 and 3 helps us to expand. Paul tells us how that by revelation he understood this. That we have been raised up with Christ. Hallelujah. And then chapter 4 and 5 begins to tell us how that um, it begins to explain to us you know our work as a believer our character how to live in the reality of what Christ died to give us so our work chapter 1 to 3 tells us about our sitting with Christ and then chapter 4 and 5 tells us about our walking then chapter 3 tells us how to stand it begins to tell us that although Chapter 1 to 3 has already established the fact that all things have been brought under the feet of Jesus. But there is an enemy. There is an adversity. And because of that, we have to be trained to stand. Hallelujah. The psalmist 
prophetically speaking about that he said blessed is the man who does not walk in the way of sinners walk nor sit in the seat of the scornful nor stand so there is walking sitting standing these are three prophetic postures in the spirit unfortunately most people just know how to sit hallelujah are you following me now chapter 6 verse 12 chapter 6 verse 12 the reality of the realm of the spirit you don't need to have a vision or a trance to be convinced that there is a realm beyond that which you see hallelujah can we start from verse 11 please verse 11 it says put on the whole armor of God question the same Paul that revealed to us in the Pauline epistles the revelation of our seated position with Christ now begins to admonish us. He said, put on the whole armor of God that ye may be able to what? Stand. Why will Paul say stand? Whereas he said we are already seated in heavenly places. Paul said we have been exalted far above thrones and dominions and every name that is named not just in this age but in the world to come. Now he's saying stand against the wiles of the devil. Verse 12. For we wrestle. Uh -uh. What are you saying again Paul? We are seated in a position of rest. Now you are talking of wrestling. He didn't say for we argue. He said, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers. See how many times the Bible says against. It didn't say for. Against. 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 This is a contention. Look, let me tell you something, brothers and sisters. This world is not a playground. Don't let films deceive you. Whether you believe it or not, there is a rude reality that every man born by a woman must face, especially in this day and age. Against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness, where? Where is the location called high places? Stop. Help me. Use your Google map to show me a location called high places. Where do we find it? But the Bible says, there are planes in the spirit called high places. Where is it located? Geography students, scholars and intellectuals, help us. Where is the spiritual location called high places? Other versions say heavenly places. I told you, there are heavens and there is heaven. The Bible says the heaven of heavens. That means there are other heavens. We discussed that already. I don't want to go into it. The reality of heaven and hell, we touched that. Many people have gone to all of those astral realms and come back and told us they went to heaven. Hallelujah. Are you listening to me? There is a real realm, brothers and sisters. There are astral realms. There are people who live in this earth who travel there and come back. They go to get power they go to get wealth, real spiritual realms. By the grace of God, I've had the opportunity to minister to probably thousands of people. So I can tell you from the truth of God's word and from experience. There is a real realm. Are you listening to me? There is a real solid realm. The Bible calls Satan that old where was he living before Adam came? Because the Bible does not tell us he's young. He said that old serpent. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Everybody said the realm of the spirit is real. I want you to also know that the realm of the spirit is not heaven. The realm of the spirit has, there are demonic realms, demonic dimensions in the spirit. So if you are caught up in the realm of the spirit, you will just believe that you will see streets of gold. No, sir. You will see a real atmosphere like this. It's just that it is not solid and material. And it is not bounded by three dimensions. I have been there. It is not drama that I read from a book. 
in the realm of the spirit there is no time and there is no distance the concept of time and distance is the concept of physics Isaac Newton developed it in mechanics to help people relate with the things a process but in the realm of the spirit it does not exist I was in the spirit on the Lord's day at once at once hallelujah do you believe what I'm sharing please do hallelujah another strange location although we use it prophetically as anywhere the believers are where is Mount Zion because the Bible says ye are come to Mount Zion that means you can come where is the location of Mount Zion I'm not talking of geographical Mount Zion hallelujah there have been many findings in our world today that the world has not been able to offer sufficient explanation. One of it is the mystery of the Bermuda Triangle. Many people have been able to seek all kinds of explanation. Why is it that there is an intense magnetic field around that region that will wipe away everything at once, no matter how heavy it is? What is it about this strange thing? What is it about tornadoes and hurricanes that sweep across nations? How can a wind remove blocks and kill people? The spirit realm is real. Brothers and sisters, it's as real as this realm. As we are in this meeting right now, there are angels in this place. There are a lot of angels the angels that have been sent to guard you because every child of God has angels once you are born again and you are in Christ as a matter of fact even when you are not born again there are angels hallelujah there are angels I can prove that to you from scripture remember the Bible says when Peter was bound the Bible says the apostles were praying is that true when they were praying, the Bible says an angel came and took him out of the first um, barricade, second, third, and led him. When he came and knocked the door, they opened the door. They said they thought it was his angel and they closed it back. So we have angels. Second proof, are they not ministering spirits? Send to minister to they that be the heirs of salvation. And the Bible says we are heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ. So there are angels. There are also demon spirits. Yes, they are listening to me right now as I'm talking to you. The unfortunate thing is that many of them could not come this far. Because there is always a wall of fire that surrounds the people of God. I'm opening you up to the realm of the spirit. So that you begin to walk with this consciousness. I never walk alone. Never ever walk alone. There are special angels that follow us when we are going for certain ministrations. They are angels that guard revelations. Revelation chapter 1 verse 1. The Bible says he sent it and signified it by his angel. There are angels that guard the safe delivery of revelations. I am come to give thee Daniel understanding. There are angels that are signed. There are different strata and levels of angels. There are ministering spirits. This caliber of angels walk among men. They walk among men. There is the northern army of God. There are all kinds and varieties. There are seraphs. There are cherubims. There are messenger angels. Different strata of angels. There are not just angels like that. Satan was one of those cherubs. Let me surprise you. The opposite of God is not Satan. Don't insult God. The opposite of God is not Satan. In scripture... God weighed Satan and put angel Michael to handle him. It cannot be God. Twice there was an encounter. One, the mystery in heaven that was shown. Are you listening to me? From the foundations of time. The war in heaven. Michael took care of Satan. The second encounter was during taking the body of Moses. Satan came to claim the body. And Michael said again, the Lord rebuke you. And 
in the end time, in the, in the last battle, the Bible says that Michael will be released again. Hallelujah. And so there are different structures. There is an organogram of angels. There are angels that are in charge of praise and worship. There are angels that are in charge of prayer. They take the prayers of God upon files. All these things are in scripture. I'm not talking about the angelic realm. I just want to open you up to the reality of the spirit realm. When you are still in, there are demons watching you. Hello? There are angels watching you. That is the reason why Satan has been able to give himself a name called the accuser. Why is he the accuser? He has a vast army station that monitors the activities of believers part time. Are you aware of that? Praise the Lord. So the realm of the spirit is real. There are four substances that were borrowed from the realm of the spirit into this realm. This is why science cannot fully understand them. Number one, light. Light is not just a physical substance. Light is a spiritual substance. This is the reason why quantum physics is very difficult. It's an attempt to open people up to a realm that is not three-dimensional. Don't blame yourself when people say you are not good in quantum, although read. But I'm just telling you, it's not child's play. Hallelujah. Number two, fire. Everybody look at me. What is this terrible thing called fire? You cannot hold it, yet it is not threatened by anything. You can't box it. You can't put it in a box and wrap it. It will burn everything, yet it does not have any force that you can see, but it consumes. These are spiritual realities. Number three, water. This thing called water. Strange. Number four, wind. You can't catch it, but the effect is undeniable. Open your eyes. Will you open your ears? And then you understand that the Lord is here. Open your eyes. Will you open your ears? And then you understand that the Lord so everybody said the realm of the spirit is real the psalmist said yeah though I walk through a valley called the shadow of death who told the psalmist it was a valley and not a mountain of the shadow of death how did the psalmist see it the psalmist said he will give you a garment called praise so praise is not just what you sing it's a garment in the realm of the spirit you can wear it Hallelujah. The realm of the spirit is an exciting realm. The last thing I want to talk about. Oh, I said four things. Five. There is the fifth one. Words. Words. Dangerous spiritual mysteries that defy physical explanation. Words have sent nations to war. Because somebody, somebody spoke. The earth was created with a word. It will be destroyed with a word. What is it about words? The words that I speak, they are spirit and life. Look at me. I said it here, let me say it again. During the time of the apostles, they didn't have this. I hope you know. What did they call their word of God? Because it was their experience today we call the word of God. So whenever they said the word is quick and powerful, what did they refer to? There needs to be a redefinition in the body of Christ. I believe this, of course. This I, I'm not against this at all. Hallelujah. The reality of the realm of the spirit. 
heavenly places. There are planes. There are dimensions in the realm of the spirit. Another thing I want to tell you is that there are portals from the earth realm that physically open people out to the realm of the spirit. This will shock some of you. Did you hear what I said? There are what? Portals. Look at me please. There are physical portals. It is geography that told us the earth is round or good or what's the shape. I want to tell you that there are portals that physically open men out of this realm. I'll prove it to you from scripture. The Bible tells us, listen, the Bible tells us, listen please, that when the nation of Israel were asked to choose whether they were standing for God or not. The Bible says the ground opened. Is that true? Swallowed all of them at once and closed back as if nothing happened. Question, is the ground a living thing? Who asked it to open? Swallow them and close back Oh, Jacob got to a prophetic portal and he said this is the gate of heaven. It wasn't just a vision. He said, where I am standing, I'm standing the gates of heaven. When Elijah was going to check out of the earth, he knew the exact place where there was a physical portal that would take him out of the earth. Beyond the Jordan, he said, Elijah, ask your request quickly because very soon you will see chariots come to take me. And immediately he looked, he saw chariots that came and picked his physical body out of the earth realm. When Jesus was about to go to heaven in Acts chapter 1, he knew the exact place to stay and he started levitating till he disappeared. Where are these portals? Ruth Heflin, one great woman that walked with the Lord, said a bit about this, but there was a woman called Anna Roundtree. Anna Roundtree was with Jesus every day of 2005. Every day. And she said that the Lord Jesus told her that there are 15 portals. 15 that open people up now i, I I'm, I'm just browsing through it because we we'll have to do a lot of study she them she showed all of them there is a book within you no know, the priestly bride and the heavens open is you may not be able to get it except in pdf formats but i just want you to know that there are realms hallelujah there are realms the third thing i want you to know is that spirit beings can materialize themselves and manifest in this realm. Are you getting me? Human beings cannot do that. But because the realm of the spirit is higher, human beings, I mean spirit beings, can materialize themselves and come into this earth realm. We are not alone. We've spoken about it, right? The mystery of the aliens. We explained it. Because the Bible says in Genesis chapter 6, how that the world grew wickedly. Is that true? Is that in your Bible? And the Bible says the sons of God. I told you that word son of God is not technon or wheels of God. It was just a name. Demonic forces, spirit beings, superhuman people. The Bible says they came and they slept with the daughters of men. Is that true? And they gave birth to an aberration. Half man, half human being. We call them giants. Nephilims. They are still alive till today. And the Bible says before the coming of Christ, it will be like the days of Noah again. That means there will be a repetition of that event. It's already happening. The unidentified flying objects, UFOs. Hello planet earth. I shall not die. You better know what you need to know to live. Otherwise it will be a hateful time of life. I have a documentary. I have a documentary where people were digging into the earth realm. When they were digging, they found a place that could take 20,000 people below the earth and it was made by aliens. I have a documentary where these aliens have had meetings with United States presidents right from 1914s. They are alive. They are around. They are in the earth let CNN fool you. Let me tell you when the church is raptured, this book will become a rebest seller again because every historian will buy it to try to understand everything this Bible said will come to pass. Every. Hallelujah. 
There are many realms. The dream realm is the realm of the spirit. Your dream realm is a real realm in the spirit. It's not those psychosomatic, psycho whatever, you know, uh, subconscious, all this. Anything that is not physical is spiritual, period. Hallelujah. God came to Solomon in a dream. Was it, was it a mirage? It was a real solid experience. Joseph had an encounter not to leave Mary in a dream. A dream realm is a real realm. That's why somebody can have something in a dream and wake up physically. Is that true? Have you seen people sleep and they flog them and they woke up with physical marks all over there? Have you seen that happen? So how did that happen? Thank you, Jesus. The second thing I want you to know is that Satan is real. Everybody said, one to go. Satan is real. Listen, one of the things that secular humanism is promoting in the Western world and is creeping gradually into Africa is that Satan is trying to convince men using the tool of intellectualism that he does not exist. So people now teach, even men of God in church, they say the only devil that is there is your inner mind. Have you had those kind of psychopathic, devilish Christian science teachings? The only devil is the one in your mind. And if you can shift your mind away, you bring out your limited you. Ah, be careful, oh. Be very careful. Some of those teachings, the Bible says, in the latter days, men will give themselves to deceptive spirits. Different demons have appeared to people and brought all kinds of theology that we promote in the body of Christ right now. Satan is real. Satan is not a mirage. Satan is not one bull with horns as Freemasons tell us or the one you see in Tom and Jerry or all of those cartoons. Let me tell you the truth. Satan is real. Everybody say it. Satan is real. Demons are real. Say it. And wickedness is real. Satan is real. The Bible says when the sons of God came to meet with God, Satan was part of, their, of them. A real person. And God looked at him and said, Ah, oh boy, where are you coming from? He said, going to and fro. He's a living thing. He's not a flower. Satan is not fire. He's a living thing. He can move. Only God knows how many times he has passed your street. <laughs> not demons. The real Satan himself. Hallelujah. I also want you to know that there are three qualities that make Satan not to be like God. Or there are three qualities that will test everything and put God in a position where he is alone. Number one, omniscience. Omniscience is the ability to know all things. Satan does not know all things. Please get this straight to your mind. Satan does not know all things. For instance, what you will become. Satan does not know. The Bible says, now are we the sons of God. And it doth not yet appear. He said, eye has not seen any kind of eye. It has not seen. Nor ear heard. There are ways in the realm of the spirit that Satan can peep and have an idea. This is what soothsayers and diviners and necromancers, they can use stargazing and astrology to predict certain things. And wow people and perform magic like the Egyptian magicians. Hallelujah. Satan is real. Demons are real. Wickedness is real. Satan is not omniscient. He does not know all things. If he knew all things, he would have known where Moses was hiding and not waste time killing everybody. If he knew all things, he would have gone to kill Jesus at once. His trial and error. See, do you know why Satan killed Cain? I've told you. There was a prophecy in the Garden of Eden. The seed of the woman shall bruise the head of the serpent. Eve gives birth to Cain. And Satan thought that Cain is the seed of the woman. So he came and entered Cain. Then he was shocked. And when he found out that they gave birth to another child, he said, Cain, kill Abel in case Abel is the seed of the woman. 
Are you seeing that? When Moses was born, Satan thought Moses was the seed of the woman. Then he missed it again. He kept, that's why when John the Baptist was born and he began to manifest, he moved through the scribes to ask him, are you the Messiah? In other words, let's verify. And Moses, I mean, Elijah, um, John the Baptist kept confusing them. He said, I'm a voice. They said, don't confuse us. Who are you? We want to kill you. That's why Herodias asked for his head. What will you do with the head of the man? That's why when Jesus said, all right, I'm not hiding it again. I am. They started following him till he died. So it was a plan. Satan killed. I mean, Jesus allowed Satan through people to kill him. And I will tell you why. It's still a law in the realm of the spirit. If you kill a man, the person's blood is permitted to haunt you for life. We'll talk about that. Don't worry. John 8 44. Who is Satan? Who is this guy called Satan that has threatened people? When you are going home alone, you just are hearing sounds that you shouldn't hear because you are afraid. He, there is Satan. If you watch a Nigerian film, we watched one fearful film years ago called uh, what they call it, Ultimate Power. Ha! That film was not very encouraging. Hallelujah. He says, ye are of your father, the devil, and the lust of your father ye will do. He said he was a murderer from the beginning. Ah, ah. That's a terrible description. That means there is a story we don't know. Where is the story that brought Satan as a murderer? There are hidden stories enshrined. So Jesus was saying, I know this guy, yo. There are lots of stories you don't know. You just know Genesis from 1 verse 2. There is a lot more. Even part of his archives was that he was once a murderer. When did this happen? From the beginning. And he abode not in the truth. Because there is no truth in him. He said when he speaketh, he speaketh a lie of his own. He said for he's a liar. And the originator of all them that lie. The word lie there is not just negating the truth. It's deception. Satan is a deceiver. His, his character is to deceive. He deceived the whole world. The badge of Satan is deception. What is deception? To make men err from the truth. It says ye err not knowing the scriptures. Deception. So every time the spirit of the Antichrist is manifesting in a place, there is deception. I spoke about that prophetic insight into God's agenda. You can get the teaching. Deception. Hallelujah. Let's hurry up. Revelations 12 verse, verse 9. Revelations 12, I believe verse 9. Let's turn there quickly. Or verse 7. Let's start from verse 7. It gives us another history that many of you may have not paid attention to. And there was war in... Why will there not be war on earth? When even in heaven, there was war. Is that in your Bible? Heaven, there was war. Michael and his angels fought against who? The dragon. And the dragon fought against his angels. This was Satan. Satan. And prevailed not. Neither was there found a place for him in heaven. This was the judgment before Genesis 1 verse 2. Listen. The Bible says in Genesis 1 1. It says in the beginning. The beginning of beginnings. Deathless past. It says God created the heavens and the earth. We don't know how long that was. No historian can know. Are you following me now? Then between Genesis 1 verse 1. And Genesis 1 verse 2. Was millions and probably billions of years. Are you following me now? This story is sandwiched between Genesis 1 verse 1 and 1 verse 2. There was a lot of things that happened. And the Bible says Lucifer was cast down. That was, it was the judgment that led to the chaos in Genesis 1 verse 2. Are you getting me now? Now the earth, after that judgment, was void. There was water. There was darkness. And then God was going to recreate the earth. What happened in Genesis 1 verse 3 was a recreation. That's why Elohim said, the first thing he said was, let there be light. The light there was not sunlight. Because 
a few verses later he made two great lights one to rule the day so the light there was not sunlight to know more about that light you go to john one he said in him was light and that light was the light of men so that light is the quality of his person that sponsors creation let there be light hallelujah it says and the great dragon was cast out that old serpent aha uh -huh, you see now so this serpent story is not a it's a very old story are you getting me this issue of serpent are you seeing why you see things around snakes 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 deliverance with snakes serpent he said i have given you power to tread upon serpents what was jesus saying couldn't he just say to tread upon the devil why did he use the word serpent i will tell you he said satan which deceived what look at how crafty satan is the bible says satan it is within his craftiness to deceive the whole world he was cast into the earth and the angels cast with him deceives the whole world he deceives the whole world he accuses the brethren the bible says day and night it was satan listen it was satan who went and god was speaking to him he said have you considered my servant job and satan said of course uh -uh. after going to and fro the earth i must have seen job he said did you cover him for nothing Take away the barricade. Give me permission. That's another law in the realm of the spirit we are going to talk about. Satan confessed that he could not touch a man. Satan testified before God that it was impossible for him to touch a man. Do you know there are men Satan does not touch today? Jesus said, Satan cometh to me and will not find nothing of himself. when see listen when jesus became man remember the bible tells us satan is the god of this world the god of the system cosmos not the earth cosmos the system hallelujah that was why satan looked at jesus come this, this, this is what he did to jesus in the temptation the bible says when he came and met him he said turn this stone to bread jesus didn't shout at satan why and then he said follow me and jesus was following satan he took him to a mountain and showed him the kingdoms how can satan drag jesus and jesus will just follow like this i will tell you why because satan was the legal occupant of the earth he collected the keys from adam and until then the keys had not been collected yet so he could brag he said jesus i know you came to collect this key let's negotiate bow let me just give you must you go to the cross if jesus didn't go to the cross there will be no blood satan would have collected it back from man so jesus said no I have to go through a process blood must speak satan was wise listen if, if jesus gave him the key satan would have laughed later on he would have collected it back from man because there was no blood <laughs> it's the same deceit that he did for cain cain sacrificed and refused to put blood and so his sacrifice was not accepted because Satan was afraid. Let the sacrifice of Cain not be accepted. Paradventure, he is the seed that will bruise him. So he deceived him. Why this waste? Give yourself short cut. Just use vegetables. And Abel, there was blood on his sacrifice and he reached the heavens. When Elijah was going to call on God, he said, get me blood first. Without blood, I cannot call on God. I will explain to you why every time they kill in this country, people become richer. The mystery of blood money every morning the earth is blood money whether it's the blood of jesus or the blood of demons there is blood that sponsors everything Please sit wherever we can stop tonight we'll stop john 10 10. the bible says the thief another name for him the devil is very hard working look at the names he earned for himself by trying different methods it's his methodology that gave him these names another name now we're seeing the thief the dragon was not enough for him the deceiver the accuser now he has earned himself another name the thief 
The thief cometh not. That means you will never see Satan except to do this. To steal, to kill, to destroy. Everybody say to steal. Say to kill. Say to destroy. So if anybody fools you that the devil doesn't have any plans for your life or your family, let me shock you now. Get out of that deceit quick before it gets too late. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Satan pursued Jesus from birth till he went to heaven. From birth till he went to heaven. Is that true? Satan was, he paid people to say Jesus was not alive. He's still paying people today. Paying Channel O, paying MTV, paying his envoys. Remember our teaching last week? Envoys of his presence. Satan also has envoys. He's a deceiver. He's the arch enemy of the church. Satan is the arch enemy of the church. What is his purpose? Look at me. If, if this is where I stop, this night is alright. I must let you, let's uncover this Satan puzzle. Look at me everybody. Why is Satan desperate to destroy man? Have you ever asked yourself that question? Why wouldn't he, there are people who used to say, why wouldn't the devil let me go? Let me go now. Eh? Let my family go. The devil is saying, you have not seen anything yet. If you know what I suffered before you were born, you do, I don't plan to leave you until I... See, many of you don't know how old Satan is. Satan tried Moses. He tried everybody. He didn't leave them. They forced him to leave them. So you, you just come in the middle of history and believe because you just said oh i'm born again the devil say okay, let's concentrate on others you think so the angrier he gets he gets angry by the day because his time is short he's more determined over our generation than any other generation listen i want to tell you something from the 70s down to the 90s satan had been plotting a dangerous arsenal against the american church he deceived them into believing that when you are born again that's all they taught it and they transferred it to us look at what is happening to america now because of that gospel who would have known that a man would look at another man and wants to sleep with him even a preacher look at it was happening behind the scene while they were just telling themselves everything is okay the devil is saying time i am patient I can be patient for a whole generation. He kept mapping his strategy. Right now, they are removing the commandments. They are doing everything. People are occupying positions. And he's coming to Africa softly. And God is raising people. Say, Joshua Selman, arise. You are this horn. And Koinonia, arise. Yes. Because if we keep allowing this incomplete gospel to fool us, one day, a day will come catastrophe will happen again in nigeria maybe we'll start sleeping with animals but there are carpenters that will not bow look at what has happened to america brothers and sisters this was a place i was discussing with somebody i said where are the people who carried the mantles of smith wigglesworth where are they they were do you know satan made sure a generation did not take the mantle while these guys were preaching, Satan was busy taking. He started destroying these people from a tender age. And right now, Cartoon Network, all of these many networks, I'm not saying they are bad, but I'm saying there is another conspiracy to destroy young people. Satan can be patient even if he's 50 years. Right now, they will show sex in a cartoon and do something, something that was for entertainment and children are watching and the parents say they are small. Hold on. Very soon, you will see them get up one day and you will see the drama that begins to happen. You will see police with your son. Where is he coming from? He went to sleep with somebody. They say, oh yeah, let's go to the prison. That's when you will know that there is drama. You say, you? 12 years. 12 years. What do you know about this? They say, I watched it somewhere. Or you will catch, look at all the people that are terrorizing the country. Which old man has the strength to carry God? Who doesn't like his life like that in his old age after suffering he wants to enjoy the remaining one decade or two de decades young people because i'm sorry to say this and i have a lot of honor for our father but their eyes are becoming dim like elijah and, and, and like eli and it's money that is making that eyes become dim 
So they are concentrating on building a lot of empires. And therefore, right now, many churches do not have respect for the youth. There are many churches that don't even have provision for Sunday school again. Is that true? And they think it is not necessary. Young people in many churches don't have a place again. The elders come with their philosophy. This little boy now, no provision for him. So he will get up with a godless mindset. They just leave them to be playing outside. As if demons cannot enter them. When you say anything, they say, please, don't be fanatical. It's children. Until the day the child says, I am the one that tied the father's head. The, the father will look at the child. Six years old, he say, yes, I'm the one that tied your head. This is what is happening around. This is what is happening around. Don't laugh. I counsel people all the time. The whole world lieth in wickedness. Wake up tonight. The weapons of our warfare. is a deceiver. The arch enemy of the church. Let me round up quickly by telling us what the agenda of Satan is. Satan is very visionary. He's not just trying to chase people up and down. Hallelujah. Listen. I want to tell you something. The devil is not interested in frivolities. There is a reason why he wants to get people down. Three reasons. Number one, Satan is on a revenge mission. You must understand this. Everybody say revenge mission. Have you watched films that they came and destroyed the actor's people and they thought they were dead and the actor said, I must revenge. All these Chinese films, Satan is on his own Chinese film. He has been doing it since and he will not give up. This, you see this story we just read in Revelation. That thing stung the ego of Satan. God didn't even fight. It was Michael that arranged him. They sent him to the earth. And Satan had been angry. Now guess what? What was Satan's annoyance? Listen. Satan was the value cherub that covereth. Are you getting me? Because the angels of God excel in strength. Why do they excel in strength? Because they are standing in the presence of God. And because God is ever changing. They are a reflection of his ever-changing nature. So Satan being the closest cherub to God, got to a point where he was an embodiment of all. Even other angels. Listen, Satan had the power to discipline other angels. That's what the lake of fire was created for. The, I've told you this. The lake of fire is not hell. Remember, I proved to you from scripture that hell, death, and the grave will be cast into the lake of fire. The lake of fire is part of God's kingdom. It had been there. It had been there. There's no time I would have shown you from the word of God. Hallelujah. Are you listening to me? Oh, it has been there. Yes. They are not just creating it. They are finished since. That was the reason why when Satan conspired and he was, what did he want? He wanted to exalt himself and carry the nature of God. He had the likeness of God. The angels have the likeness of God. That's why they excel in strength. The brightness of his glory. Are you getting me? God has two hands. Angels have two hands, not three. Are you getting me? If you see one with three, be careful. Be very careful. Hallelujah. So that's his likeness. But Satan wanted the image of God. That quality that can make him to begin to legislate like God. And God said, uh -uh, you have gone too far. And he cast him down. And guess what? He created man and now gave man the prayer request of Satan. You get the point? God now gave us that. Satan was watching. When God said, let them have dominion. Satan said, what? This is what you threw me down for. It's unfair. It, that's why occultic tell you that God was unfair to Satan. This is the unfairness. They say, how can God refuse to? He punished Satan for wanting something and gave man who did not ask for it. That's why I say, what manner of love? You see it? What manner of love? So Satan said, no way. This is a mockery to my personality. God will mold clay. You know how angels were made? Angels were not made from sand. Angels were made. How many of you have seen lightning? Lightning. That is the material of their creation. The least angel was made from that light. So Satan watched God mold clay. He weaks, he uses the weak things. Are you getting me now? So he used clay and put his image and Satan said, come on. No, no way. We are going to fight against this. So that anger 
is what Satan still has towards you. You gave your life to Christ and you believe Satan is your friend. Now, with all this story I've told you, do you think he wants to leave you? Hallelujah. This is that old story. So Satan came to Adam. Listen, why did he come to Adam? He came to Adam because he saw God giving him the keys. God gave him the keys. And he knew that through reproduction, he was going to reproduce people after his kind, who are after the kind of God. And they will intimidate Satan again. Satan cannot stand seeing people with the image of God. The, how many of you, let me, let's, let's be very honest. Brothers will understand this. Brother, you like a particular lady. You don't know what to do about it. The thing is eating you. Then somebody that you feel is not up to you will just come and meet her. And then the lady will be dying for the person. You get that pain, multiply it times infinity. That's what Satan is feeling today. Because the church is the bride of Christ. You see that pain. So every time I stand, mortal clay, I say, let it be. And it becomes, Satan is annoyed. How can clay, clay, the psalmist say, what is man that thou art mindful of him? Did you not see angels that you could make men? What is man that thou art mindful of him? Not the son of man that thou visitest him some age. He said you have made him a little lower than Elohim. And you have crowned him with glory and honor. This is how special you are. If you understand this, you will not let any man drag your life in a mud. It took God a lot to make you what you are. That's a permanent cure for inferiority. Just see the efforts God made to birth you. See how many angels would have taken your place. They all stood hoping and God said, I have another plan. It's not one of you. He started molding clay and breathed into that clay and called it Adam. Even when man fell, God went out of his way to start pursuing man. It pains Satan again. Ha! I fell once. You punish me. Man has fallen many times. You are still looking for him. This is injustice. You see it? You see what pain Satan. So he came and met Joshua the high priest and said, God, I'm coming to accuse. This guy is a priest. He's coming. You punish me for falling. Now look at this man. And God said, I just love him. Case closed. I am God. I can veto anything. Jacob have I loved. Esau have I hated. Why will I not love him with all my heart? This is not an issue of psyching you. You let aside your majesty. Gave up everything for me. Suffered at the hands of those you have created. You took all my guilt and shame when you died and rose again. Now today you reign forever and now exalted. I really want to worship you, my Lord. You have won my heart and I am yours forever and ever. I will love you. You are the only one who died for me. Gave your life to set me free. So I lift my voice to you in adoration. Listen, if you stop loving God because He didn't give you husband, you are a wicked person. Look at what he went through. And will he not give you prosperity or ministry? You see why God gets angry when men stop trusting him. He says you are ungrateful people. Look at what I did to you. Only because the breakthrough did not come. Now you are backsliding. That's why I love him with my life. Money or no money. Ministry or no ministry. He has already done too much. Too much. Listen, if God called one of the angels and gave him his image, he is still God. 
how many, look at how many times people fail God and it's not like we went and we were repentant he was the one chasing us and begging this thing this thing is still paining Satan till tomorrow why will God leave his throne let me tell you when Satan saw Jesus becoming a baby he knew that this was the height of in quote stupidity of God not only did God chase man through the prophets now the word became flesh came and entered the womb of a woman was patient for 30 years men insulted him that's why he came to Jesus and said I am concerned about your humiliation take the keys just bow to me and God said no that's why the Bible says wherefore God so highly God was so impressed by the humility of Jesus look at all the stars he created yet he degraded there are cadres in the realm of the spirit he became lower than the seraphs lower than that's why see to an extent the bible says after his fasting and prayer angels came and ministered to him they were consoling their maker what humility so satan is on a revenge mission there is anger and annoyance that's why he will not leave your family that's why he will keep deceiving preachers to tell people everything is all right just shake your body and feel nice let me tell you the truth get out i'm not saying be angry or criticize any man of god <laughs> but the moment you do that satan start taking a breath of fresh air and says please continue if you need money for this kind of ministry i'll keep giving you money that's why some people get money without praying they think it's god that is giving it satan is saying camp at this level if it's, if money will make you not to pray take the money stop praying just be enjoying the money let me continue dealing with other people but there are some people that have determined money or no money it can't stop our prayer every day we will shake the gates they must hear this sound we must register our presence prosperity or no prosperity whether my family needs help or not is a sign i'm just letting satan know hello good morning ambassadors are still alive hey. hallelujah the second reason listen is because there is something called the written judgment judgment that has been written for satan i hope you know that nobody can pray it we cannot gather now and say god forgive satan please uh -huh. it is written are you getting me now so satan believes listen satan knows he's going to the lake of fire i hope you know that he has deceived the demonic realm to believe that he will overthrow mankind listen and accept the army rise it looks like it's possible because when you see the way satan is possessing and oppressing families it looks like there is no hope so satan keeps convincing the demons and say if we continue a day will come we will destroy mankind and god will do another strategy and this lake of fire agenda might be cancelled are you getting it now because for as long as the church does not rise jesus cannot come i hope you know that yeah the coming of Jesus is not a mystery. Please, don't. I have shown you. I have shown you. Jesus is not coming like a thief in the night to the church. Brothers and sisters. 1 Thessalonians 5. Please, very quickly. 1 Thessalonians 5. Let's just settle this in once and for all. I've told you. He's coming like a thief in the night. The Bible says that. The question is to who? Not to the church. How can he love us so much and come like a thief in the night to us? Who is he afraid of that is coming like a thief? Let's look at it. See, a lot of theology that we got, we believe them, we are convinced. Everybody, look up, I'll start reading. But of the times and seasons, brethren, ye have no need that I write to you. Verse 2. For you yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord so cometh like a thief in the night this is where many of our theologians stop is that true but there is more read on for when they who are the day not us 
when they shall say peace and safety then sudden destruction come on upon them as travail upon a woman with child and they shall not escape if you love god and you believe in his word read verse 4 one to go is it not in your bible is that not it he said but ye brethren he has spoken about they the foolish virgins who are outside now he's saying ye brethren you are not in darkness so why should it come in the night he says that that day should overtake you like a thief is it not the spirit and the bride that tells the world to come the world does not just come the spirit koinonia in partnership it is the church in partnership with the holy spirit who say we have conquered the systems king of kings come and behold the works of your bride and he will come and come and harvest a church without spot or wrinkle so it is because we are in the end times that god is releasing apostolic and prophetic graces to accelerate the advancement of the kingdom there are souls to be won a lot of people who are saying jesus is coming they don't have a passion for god it is true don't get me wrong jesus is really coming soon very very soon that's why he puts an urgency upon us that's why we are launching things like project Ten Thousand to make sure that we can push this gospel that's why we are sending all our messages free we don't have time to look for money right now there is an urgency on the ground why do we do all of these things if we are looking for a name can't we just write books and be receiving royalties we are smart enough to do research all the messages we have preached if we change it into books and just balance and be receiving royalty at least one of them will be a bestseller don't you think so so what puts this fire what makes you leave your house and come and sit down and other people do not understand you are a savior to them and they are now criticizing you don't be afraid you are the savior that will arise whenever people talk and say you serve don't know uh, you have the, another spirit is the spirit of christ don't just come because you want a husband or because you want a wife we we dedicate miracle service for that but there is an urgency there is a curriculum of the spirit we must cover on time hallelujah let me tell you satan hates this meeting beyond your imagination never make mistakes if you see people coming like this it is because he cannot stop them it's not that he doesn't want to he cannot because keys have been given to us and our job is to threaten him i my life's goal among the numerous goal is to give satan heart attack before jesus comes to take me home i'm not sure i may die before he comes because he's coming really soon hallelujah when we do everything we salute the earth and check out and say Toh, we have tried those who didn't listen to us i'm leaving my bible you can get it in zaria and we'll check out we will in case all you are doing is amassing wealth and amassing everything if it is not for the kingdom i have a root shock for you you may not live to enjoy it because we will be going that's when you will see the vanity of life so the bible says live for yourself treasures in heaven why are you i'm not against a life of comfort hallelujah but let your concentration be on the things of god so satan deceives us husband and wife i'm not against marriage again and all of these things oh job i don't have a job god i will backslide and god is saying after all i've done oh yeah backslide now it's your own fault and the devil is saying please go ahead backslide i will supply you the grace the bad friends all the arsenals you need to quickly backslide that's why you can download any junk in the internet free of charge because the devil wants to accelerate your backsliding and then we the men of god satan keeps making us sleep and all that we are concerned doing is criticizing people and saying what god didn't call us to do hallelujah whereas we should concentrate on building the kingdom 
we are here arguing about frivolities arguing about is he right to wear kaftan on stage or is right to wear this all of those things the devil is saying continue i beg you any opportunity to distract the church the devil is saying this is what i want so the man of god now has a lot of money they give him a lot of jeep he said my soul find rest no prayer no study no anything and the person is happy and he says i i run a ministry of so 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 number of people and uh, i'm very fulfilled the devil said thank you more of this more of this but when satan finds people who when god blesses them it doesn't change it the devil said, how do we throw these people down see the devil is thinking out while you are sleeping he's not sleeping they are just meeting and saying for god's sake how are we going to put aaron down as in the middle of the discussion then you wake up you just felt like ventilating your spirit by one o'clock in the night Rakataba, and you are shaking the car keys meaning it does not matter the car keys didn't change anything rise up on your feet let's close come on let's begin to pray in the spirit we have a passion to see his kingdom come. Pray. Say, Lord, to see your kingdom come is my desire to be a threat to the kingdom of darkness. Your prayer is an eternal investment for yourself. For your family, for your church. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Three prayer points, and we're out of here. Number one is a prayer of gratitude. You're going to say, Lord, I never saw your love in this light. Now I know you care about me. How can I kill myself? Suicide? What for? Topraka. <laughs> Say Lord I thank you for your love so protect thank you for your love in spite of myself in spite of my limitations in spite of my shortcomings thank you thank you for loving me enough to seek me oh yes thank you because you are not a man thank you because you are not a religious person hallelujah hallelujah prayer point number two you're going to say lord i receive grace to contribute in whatever way that will show you that I love you and I'm interested in your agenda. Whatever way, by casting out devils, by financing the kingdom, by getting men saved, by getting them filled with the Holy Ghost, by praying for preachers, by praying for pastors, by not gossiping about people, whatever contribution, no matter how little, I receive grace, grace, grace. Whether it's to pray for men of God, whether it's to sow into their lives, whether it's to sow into the kingdom, whether it's to get men filled with the Holy Ghost, whether it's to produce trust, whatever contribution of God, I receive grace. Listen, brothers and sisters, can I tell you something? Look at me. Do you know how desperate Jesus is to see his kingdom come, to see souls saved? No matter how little you contribute, you will hear him telling you thank you. 
I know not everybody is interested. You are going to pray and say every demonic hold that attempts to shift me away from the things of God, lukewarm spirit, bad friends, bad association, be far from my life. Open your mouth and pray. Every deceit, come on, pray. Outside, pray. Pray, go to I've my mind. I've made up my mind. I've made up my mind. No going back. Money or no money. No going back. No going No going No to see your kingdom come with my finances, with my anointing, with my voice. You have given your best. I will give my best. Hallelujah. Why should I not put a gospel ringtone? Why should I put junk music in my phone? Why should I be afraid to wear a shirt that says I'm a kingdom addict? Why should I be ashamed to preach Jesus Christ? Because the lady is fine? Or because the guy is handsome? Or I don't want to be embarrassed? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Please take it down again. Hallelujah. Next week I'm going to teach you a song. This song came while I was in Kaduna. You gave your everything. I give my everything. You gave your everything. So I give my everything. Take all of me, all of me, Lord. You have my everything. Take all of me, all of me, Lord. You have my everything. Listen, it's a simple song. You have my everything. You have my everything. Lord, you have my everything. You have my everything. Take all of me, all of me, Lord. You have my everything. Take all of me, all of me, Lord. You have my everything. Let's try one more time. You have my everything. 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 You have my Take all of me. Take all of me. All of me, Lord. You have my everything. Take all of me. All of me, Lord. You have my everything. Hallelujah. The Bible says, rejoice not over me, my enemies. He said, for when I fall, when you are about to sit together and make a funeral, you will see me arise again. He said, rejoice not over me. They that have laughed at my family, they that have looked at them and said, at 31, nobody has gone to school. He said, rejoice not. There is hope for a tree. That there are expectations that you have and now is November. The admission list came out and your name was not there. Yet in a dream, you kept seeing that you got the admission. He said there is hope for a tree. The tragedy is that the tree can be cut down, but not rooted out. He said, 
and that the tender branch thereof will not cease. Everybody say there is hope. What is hope? Let's define hope very quickly. You make all things new. Yes, you make all things new and I will follow you forward. That's what the Lord is doing in someone's life and someone's family tonight. You make all things new. Yes, you make all things new and I will follow you forward. One more time. Let's sing it as a prophecy for our lives and destinies. Come on now. You make all things new. Yes. Definition number one. Hope is a feeling of expectation and desire for a certain thing to happen. First definition. Let's hurry up. Hope is a feeling of expectation and desire for a thing to happen. In other words, is that feeling, that expectancy you have that there's something I expect to happen in my life and so you keep that fire. You keep that expectation. It's called hope. Hope is a feeling of expectation and desire for a certain thing to happen. Number two. Hope is a firm assurance. A firm assurance and a belief that things and circumstances will be better in the future. I'll take it again. Hope is a firm assurance and a belief that things and circumstances will be better in the future. Powerful definition. The assurance, firm assurance. So in the first definition, we see that hope is expectation. The second definition, faith is firm assurance. The certainty that you know that it will not end like this. Although for now, things may be unclear. Although for now, things may be unknown. But you have an assurance. I don't know how it will happen. I don't know when it will happen. But I know it will happen. The firm assurance. Number three. I'll give you three definitions. Number three, hope is an optimistic attitude. Optimistic attitude of mind. An optimistic attitude of mind based on an expectation. Keep writing. It's an optimistic attitude of mind based on an expectation of positive outcomes. Based on an expectation of positive outcomes related to events and circumstances in one's life or the world at large. An optimistic attitude of mind based on an expectation of positive outcomes related to events and circumstances in one's life. Now there are some key words that I want us to look at. When you talk about hope, the first thing you talk about is expectation. Say expectation. So I expect that certain things will happen. I may not know how they will happen. I may not know when they will happen. I don't even know where they will happen. But I know that they will happen. Number two, firm assurance. That certainty. That I know, that I know, that I know. That although it's been seven years 
and we've not been able to have a child, we know that we are going to die as parents. I know against all odds, against all medical reports, that I know, that I know, that I know that I may be SS now. But one thing I know is that when I'll be going to be with the Lord, that genotype must change. I may not know which miracle service will bring the miracle, but I have a firm assurance. And then number three is an attitude of optimism. I keep my spirit high because I know that things will change. I may not see it. It may not look like it as at now. The job has not come. I've been a graduate for 10 years. No job. I've been a man of God for 20 years. And there are just 20 members. And I love God sincerely. The ministry is not growing. Finance is not coming. Influence is not increasing. Nothing is happening. Hallelujah. I'm a lady. I've kept myself and I love the Lord. I told God I wanted to marry at 23, I'm 33. It's 10 years of waiting, nothing has happened. He said, it's an attitude of optimism. Keeping your spirit high, knowing you are not wasting your time. Very important. Why do we need hope? Very quickly. Why do we need hope? Why do we need to talk about the subject of hope? Why do we really need hope? Is it so important a subject to be talked about? Number one, I wrote here that in a world full of uncertainties, failures and darkness, hope gives us the strength to continue. In a world full of uncertainties failures and darkness hope gives us the strength to continue so the first reason why we need hope is because it supplies for us the strength it gives us the staying power the impetus to keep going even when there is no human reason to keep moving hallelujah Why should I keep serving the Lord when there are all kinds of things happening? Why should I keep hoping on God when believers seem to be dying around like chickens in our nation? Why should I keep being optimistic when it's been years and decades there's not been any graduates in our family? In a world that is full of uncertainties. Hallelujah uncertainties. For instance, the, the, doc, the, the death of Dr. Miles Munro raised a lot of questions around people, you know, because people knew how very confident he was about the principles of the kingdom. Hallelujah. One of our brothers in the technical department called me this evening to tell me he lost his brother. He just got a report that he lost his brother. Our sister in the media last week, Selena, lost her mom and the mom was coming from the church she finished service on her way to go home and a bike carried her she had an accident had sustained some internal injuries and um, by the next day she gave up and while she died they were praying I've seen a lot of people who minutes before people died they were praying in tongues in fact some who died died speaking in tongues or praying uncertainties there are times when no matter how theologically sound you are you will be faced with realities that you may not be able to answer people why is this happening hallelujah imagine that that celebrity called jesus Imagine a man who conquered death. Will you ever think that he would die? After bringing dead people back to life. You would think even if they wanted to kill him. It was based on that. That Peter took a knife to cut Malchus' ear. Because he said you don't know who you are trying. And Jesus now gave himself. And he said Jesus. I don't understand. What is going on here? Somebody tell me I'm dreaming. What is Jesus doing? Wake up. Are you sleeping? You are handing yourself. 
donating yourself to be killed. And Jesus said exactly that. And Peter said, come on now. So you fooled us all this while. Where is the jazz you've been using? So you are not really mighty. Ah, I knew it. Something in my spirit told me there was more to this man. And he ran away. But he did not know that there is hope for a tree. The Bible likens men to trees. He said, he shall be like a tree. So he said, there is hope for a tree. Jesus died, but he died for only 72 hours. When men were busy discussing his death, he was already alive. Ay, yeah, 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 yeah. Don't talk about my death when I'm already alive. We love talking about death. Two men in Emmaus were discussing the death, whereas the expiry time was only 72 hours. Did you know that this phase of your life that is full of stories is only a comma in the long span of the picture that is characterized by unending victory? It's been five years, but God has given you 80 years to prove to the devil he's alive. Hmm. There is hope for a tree. A time came, Peter was locked in prison. Now he understood. I'm sure in prison, Peter will be saying, yeah, so this is what happened to Jesus. After doing great and mighty things, terrible things in righteousness, they, they watched the Holy Spirit come upon the church to begin a new dispensation. And now they locked him. James was in the prison. They said, don't worry, we know James. James is a powerful man. And later they just heard James has been beheaded. They said, you mean the knife entered? He died? He said, James is dead. All of a sudden there was panic. They said, my goodness, we thought the anointing was going to speak for James. Uncertainties. And now they caught Peter. I'm sure Peter concluded because the Bible does not record that when they came, they met him praying. He was sleeping. Peter said, well, for me to live is Christ. To die is gain. Whatever happens, I will go and meet Jesus Christ. But he did not know. See, let me tell you something, brothers and sisters. If it is not your time, you remain immortal. Are you hearing what I'm saying? An angel came. And the Bible says the chains just fell by themselves. And he let Peter out. Same thing with Paul. Paul was used to dying. He testified. He would die immediately. They leave his spirit to just enter his body and you get up and find somewhere and rest and the job continues. Strange man. They would take reports that he's dead and they'll hear that he's in another city. Paul. Very strange man. To an extent that some men vowed that they would not eat. Have you read that in your Bible? They say we won't eat until this man dies to our supervision. We must make sure he's dead. I don't know what they did with their lives because Paul lived very long. When he went to that island called Melita, Paul rested there. There was peace and tranquility for some time. In a world full of uncertainty, in a world full of failure, in a world full of darkness, hope gives us the strength to continue. It gives us the energy to keep on moving. Still the same point. In life, in ministry, in business, in your marriage, in your academics. In other words, hope is the anchor that keeps us standing fast through the storms of life. Just like the anchor keeps the ship so that the waves will not take you too far. Hope is that anchor. Hope is that anchor that holds your life. When the boisterous storms of uncertainties in life come and buffet you like the house that is built upon the rock, sometimes it may be shaken, but hope will keep you alive. Number two, why do we need hope? Hope is one of the pillars upon which faith is built. Hebrews 11 verse 1. Hope is one of the pillars upon which faith is built. Without the revelation of hope, there cannot be faith. The Bible says, now faith is, Hebrews 11 verse 1. Now faith is the what? The 
the confident assurance of the things hoped for. So we must first hope for them. Speaking about Abraham, they said, who against all hope believed in hope. Against all hope. Romans chapter 4. Against all hope believed in hope. So hope is the pillar. One of the pillars upon which faith stands. And very quickly, I'm rushing so that we'll get to where I'm going to dwell for tonight. There are two dimensions of hope as taught in the Bible. Two dimensions of hope as taught in the Bible. Number one is what the Bible calls the blessed hope. The blessed hope. Titus chapter 2 verse 13, please. Titus chapter 2 verse 13. The blessed hope. It talks about hope that is beyond this earthly life. That's the first and the ultimate hope. Please listen to me tonight. Hope that is beyond this earthly life. Hope that is beyond the grave. The first dimension of hope that the Bible speaks to us about is what it calls the blessed hope. Titus chapter 2 verse 13. He said, looking for that blessed hope and the glorious appearing of the great God and of our Savior Jesus Christ. So the first hope that must keep us going in life, that must keep us optimistic in life, that must keep us assured in life is what the Bible calls the blessed hope. That assurance that no matter what happens, even if this body is destroyed, there is a blessed hope. Are you getting what I'm saying? Confident assurance. That the grave is not the end of life. That in spite of all of the poverty and the terrorism and whatever it is, there is an assurance the Bible calls it the blessed hope. And listen, every other manifestation of hope you have in your life is useless until this is in place. Because this is hope beyond the earthly realm. Let me tell you something. There is life beyond this place. We were talking very passionately with the school of ministry students yesterday. And we were really considering the subject of life. We are actually examining the biblical view of success and fulfillment. And I was sharing with them a few things. If your hope does not transcend beyond this earthly realm, listen to me, then of all men, you are most miserable. The Bible says, I saw the grave give up the dead. Now, all this did not happen in the earth. Life was over for them. A time where those who had the blessed hope will rejoice. The sea gave up the dead. The grave gave up the dead. All of the people. And he said, I saw the dead stand before God. And he said, great and... Those who were great and small. I saw standing before God senators. And I saw carpenters. I saw vice chancellors and professors. And I saw villagers. I saw people who could not get food to eat. And I saw those who their dogs could eat the food of royalty. He said they all stood before God. And the moment of truth came. Books were open. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Books were open. And another book was open. He said every man was judged according to the writings of that book. And he said whosoever's name. Ah. I like the Bible. No bribery, no political party. Whosoever's name was not found, you will carry your flag, carry your, your, your senatorial district, carry whatever it is to the lake of fire. Carry your prestige and your accolades. Listen to me. When you stand from the realm of the spirit and you look at the earth realm, it looks like a vapor. That's how it looks like. 
Anyone who has had a, a true visionary encounter and you have been given the privilege to look at earth, you know how you look at the cloud. The earth is truly like a mirage compared to spiritual realities. Therefore, we must have that blessed hope that I know that as I'm going about my business, I know that as I'm doing whatever I'm doing, thank God for breakthrough, thank God for whatever, but I am assured that if I get out in the morning and for any reason under the sun I do not re return, don't doubt where I am. I've gone to a place of rest. Are you hearing what I'm saying? You must convince yourself. Some of you are already afraid. There's no need being afraid of what must happen. Come to terms with it and win the war. Every time you begin, the greatest enemy of mankind as we know, they ask the wisest man, you know, societally speaking, he's considered to be the wisest man in the earth. They ask him what is the greatest problem of mankind. He said he's shocked that the government have not started talking about it. He said the fact that everybody will die. He said it's a very serious issue. We should forget about the issue of politics and oil and tackle this issue that men will die. You see that he's truly wise, right? He said, look at, we, we get up and we do the things that we do and there is one common denominator. Death. Millionaires have died in this country. Their money could not save them. Is that true? Men of God have died in this country. Habalists have died in this country. Children have died in this country. People have lost babies in the hospital. People have died 100 years plus. It makes no difference. Hear me? There is a blessed hope. There is a blessed hope. Everybody say blessed hope. This is the greatest consolation any man can have. Goodbye world. I'm staying no longer with you. Goodbye pleasures of sin. I'm staying no longer with you. I've made up my mind. To go God's way the rest of my life. I've made up my mind to go God's way the rest of my life. A day will come, let me tell you, every arrogant man in this earth must come to his knees. Oh yes, absolutely. There are men who live like they are gods of themselves. But my Bible says the earth is the Lord's. He said, once have I spoken and twice have we heard. All power does not belong to any political party. It does not belong to any terrorist group. There is a God that sits upon the circles of the earth. He may look powerless now, but a day will come. He will show his might like the brightness of the sun. And only those who have this blessed hope. Get five points without this blessed hope. You are nothing. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Marry the finest woman in the world, the most handsome and the wealthiest man in the world without this blessed hope, you are nothing. Listen, do charity. Have a big ministry. Be on air. Organize crusades if you wish. If you do not have this blessed hope, in five minutes, when your life evaporates like a vapor, you have wasted your life. Are you hearing what I'm saying? We consider everything else in our life, but we do not pay attention to this blessed hope. Many of us, it's a shame that for many pastors, this is not even a theme of our messages again. I'm going to talk about other aspects, and we're going to pray and speak over ourselves. But first and foremost, I owe a responsibility and I told God, our primary assignment as a ministry, we have four mandates from God. Number one is massive salvation of souls. I rather leave somebody, listen, listen, look at what Jesus said to somebody who was lying down. He said, your sins be forgiven. And the people said, what are you saying? For many of us, that is inferior to miracles. Hallelujah. But he said, your sins be forgiven. In other words, what you need is a blessed hope. You need something higher than this. The thief on the cross, the other ones, 
you know, he began to harass Jesus and talk and he was unrepentant even on the cross. And the other one said, uh-uh, shut your mouth. We are getting a recompense for what we have done. We are armed robbers. They caught us. They are, they are hanging us on the cross because we stole. But this man is innocent and Jesus looked at him and said, this day, my goodness, my go all his life of misery became useful by one pronunciation to release him. Can you imagine that? Barabbas stood near the king of kings. The one who could give him blessed hope, yet he did not have it. Judas Iscariot was the treasurer of the custodian of this blessed hope, yet he did not receive it. He committed suicide and went to hell. Are you hearing what I'm saying? He went and bought a field with the money and killed himself. Blessed hope. Many times I think about my life and I'm telling you, I live a very happy life. One of the reasons why I don't worry in my life is because I know that every other thing on earth will only happen if I'm alive. Is that true? The subject of CGPA is over when you go to be with the Lord. If the trumpet sounds now, okay, let me not talk about death since you're afraid of death. The trumpet will still sound. The Bible talks about his appearing. The trumpet sounds. Now, I guarantee you I'm out of this place. You just see this mic on the floor. You can come and carry it if you think that what we're saying is joke. Because there are people here who are hearing this and will just laugh. I remember writing a letter to some of my friends and classmates years ago, secondary school classmates, and one of my friends he studied theater art. He said he saw my rapture entertainment paper. Rapture Entertainment Newsletter. He said he's, he saw it, it got to him. I said, don't worry. It will be a newsletter indeed. By the time we check out of this place, brothers and sisters, there is an event called Rapture. Are you hearing what I'm saying? It is not a prophetic event. It is a real event. It will happen. Where human beings will exit this earth, the greatest shock of humanity will happen. So I live my life with eternity in view. Yes, I want to be blessed financially. Yes, I want ministry to expand. Yet I want this and that to happen. But brothers and sisters, beyond that, that only becomes a worthy pursuit when you know that your eternal security is there. Let me tell you the truth. Satan's ultimate goal is not to make you poor. If that's all his goal, then he has insulted himself. Are you getting what I'm saying? Satan's ultimate goal is not to put curses and spells and witches and wizards. No, that's not Satan's ultimate goal. His ultimate goal is to make sure that number one, he terminates the possibility of the blessed hope in your life. When he finds out that there is no room, you are already lost, then he will try to deal with you from the earth realm so you can fraternize with him to secure the fact that you will not make it. Hallelujah. Imagine the nightmare Satan lives with, knowing he has been doomed forever. There is no opportunity for salvation. So every morning I wake up, Satan is afraid. Because the more we advance the kingdom, the more his time of doom comes near. He said, have you come to destroy us before our time? There is a time that is their own. It's for them. It has been earmarked. It's not a secret. They know it. That a dispensation will come where death, hell, and the grave will be casted into the lake of fire. The Bible calls it the second death. That is when officially the meter of eternity will start reading. Satan is aware. Satan is aware. That's why the moment you declare the name of the Lord and you commit your life to bringing people into the saving knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ, you have declared war on the gates of hell. There are people right here Listen, I will never make assumptions. There are people here, you are looking at me. You know right now that if the trumpet sounds, the sincere truth is that you do not have this blessed hope. There is no guessing it, brothers and sisters. Uh, I can't remember exactly when I got born again. I think I just know that I love God. Look at me. 
Madam, are you married? Yes. When? Uh, when exactly was I married? I just know that somehow, somehow, this man used to stroll around and now we have many children. Are you married? And Sammy, are you married? People celebrate their wedding anniversaries with joy. True or false? We are 20 years in marriage and they smile. They say, for these 20 years, God has been faithful. Let me tell you something. There are many believers deceiving themselves. They do not have one, what the Bible calls the assurance of salvation. And number two, they are not taking it seriously. We think about money and every other thing aside from the blessed hope. But tonight, the Lord wants to make all things new. I'm going to take an altar call. I just feel as you stop here and let's take a powerful altar call right now to the shame of the devil. Hallelujah. Listen. There is no playing games, brothers and sisters. Whether you are poor or rich. Right now in the church, they say, don't threaten people. Don't teach about anything rapture. Just give them a good reason. <laughs> Whether you feel threatened or not, let me tell you the truth. It will happen. Jesus is coming soon. Everything that needs to happen for him to come has happened. The final sign, the preaching of the gospel of the kingdom is what we are doing right now. And at every moment, his majesty can come. If you are afraid of the coming of Jesus Christ, it's because you are going to hell. It should be a thing we should rejoice about and say, Lord, finally, an end comes to this life of misery. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Everyone rise on your feet. We're going to take this altar call right now. Please, let this be a solemn moment. I am, I am, I am dead serious with what is happening right now. Hallelujah. There are people here who are said, man of God, I love the Lord. I have served the Lord. Some of you may even be preachers, but you are saying sincerely, I am not sure that that blessed hope, there is a condition for it to happen. The Bible says, if thou shalt confess with thy mouth that Jesus is Lord, and you believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. It's not anything that you have to do on your part. You just receive the free gift of salvation. The Bible says, for all have sinned. All have sinned. There's nothing embarrassing about realizing that you probably have not received the gift of salvation. He said, all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. But the Bible says, for God so loved the world. He gave his one and only begotten son. He said, whosoever, no selection shall believe in him believes in him will not perish but have eternal life there are people here some of you you have been around church you you do a lot of spiritual things and you have believed that that is a justification we will stand in the golden city in the new jerusalem and our hope and all our pains will be no more. We will stand and cry, Holy is the Lamb. We will worship and adore you forevermore. Oh, this is the destiny of the church. We will stand in the golden city in the new Jerusalem. Our hope and all our fears will be no more. And we will stand with the host of heaven and cry, Holy is the Lamb. We will worship and adore you evermore. Right now, as we sing this song, wherever you are, inside and outside, you need to come and surrender to Jesus. I like you to passionately, like a man running away from fire. Find your way to the front right now. Find your way to the front right now. 
find your way to the front right now the moment we raise this song i like you to come mean business with him we will stand in the golden city in the new jerusalem all our pain and all our fears will be no more don't sit back deceiving yourself we will stand with the hosts of heaven and cry holy is the lamb we will worship and adore you forevermore we will stand in the golden city Jerusalem and we will and cry holy is the Lamb we will worship and adore you forevermore for the last time now we will stand in the golden city in the new Jerusalem. All our pain and all our fears will be no more. We will stand with the host of heaven and cry, Holy is the Lamb. We will worship and adore you. and adore him forevermore the saints will see him holy 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 he's the lamb that's what we will sing at his feet holy 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 he's the lamb oh when this life is over that's our song holy 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 they that have been washed by the blood of the Lamb. Holy, holy, holy. Standing, receiving all kinds of crowns of glory. Standing at His Majesty's where He will tell us, Well done, thou good and faithful servant. Enter into the joy of the Lord. We'll sing, Holy. All our pain and all our fears will be no more. I know this, that I will stand with the host of heaven and cry, Holy is the Lamb. We will worship and adore. Listen, even if you live to 120 years hear me you're not going to die young don't be afraid this is not a funeral service we have a covenant of life and prosperity are you hearing what i'm saying what i'm telling you even if you live 200 years one of the interesting things in the bible is that they will mention a very long age of a man and then they will say and he died he still died Some of you are standing and you are crying. I tell you the truth. There is nothing to be ashamed of. Tonight can be that night. I don't care what you have done. I don't care what. There are some of us who need to rededicate our lives. I just sense that there are still one or two people that need to join them and say for me I'm rededicating it. I'm saying Lord I surrender everything. I've been stubborn towards the will and the purposes of God. You are part of that inside and outside. Join them quickly as I pray for you. Thank you for giving to the Lord. I am a light that was changed. Thank you for giving to the Lord. I am so. Hallelujah.
Hallelujah. Those of us in front here, in one minute, I'd like you to talk to the lover of your soul. Talk to him. He died for you. The Bible says, while we were yet sinners. As you pray, I want you to think about your life in one minute. And tell yourself it's over. Enough of playing games. And for all of us who are standing, don't think because you are standing, it means you should not reflect. Please, in one minute, I'd like everybody to reflect on your life. Am I living my life in a way that if I see it being replayed, I will be glad I lived that way? Am I living my life in a way that if I am to watch myself in heaven, I will say, thank you, Jesus. I spent my life on the purposes of the kingdom. Lift your voice and pray. This is serious business tonight. This is why Jesus shed his blood. Please, don't you think we are playing games tonight? This is a very serious issue. If you are under the sound of my voice, you should be thinking about your life very deeply and seriously. No man will stand for you on that day. There is no advocate, no pastor, no prophet, no apostle. He said, books were open. I saw the dead, both small and great. Let what you are hearing tonight not stand against you in the day of judgment. Pray. Those of you in front, pray. Jesus, you died for me. Jesus, you died for me. I return to you now. I return to you. Jesus, Son of God, I believe in you. I believe in you. That's what you should be saying, those of you kneeling down in front. Jesus, Son of God, I Just the voices, I like you to hush it from the depths of your heart. Jesus, he said, Whosoever believes in him shall not perish but have life everlasting. Whosoever believes in him, hallelujah. Those of you in front, I like you to say after me from the depths of your heart, I never forget this day. Some of you are rededicating yourself. Some of you are truly surrendering all. Say after me, Lord Jesus, I surrender every aspect of my life completely to you. I make you Lord of my life. I have run away from you for too long. But tonight, like a prodigal child, I return home to you, the lover of my soul. I return to you. Wash me with your blood. Cleanse me. Make me new. Give me a new beginning. Write my name in the Lamb's book of life. That when this life is over, I will have that blessed hope. I declare today that I willingly, consciously make Jesus Lord of my life. I'm willing to live by your word in the name of Jesus. Father, what a privilege, what a privilege. I ask you in the name of your son, Jesus Christ, that the grace for a new beginning, give them. In the name of Jesus. For many of them, they have been running like a deer that pants for the water. And tonight they have found salvation. I ask that this will be a genuine desire. That on that day when we all stand, we will see them. I bless you. I declare your sins forgiven. I declare that your name is in the Lamb's book of life. And I declare that Jesus is Lord of your life. From tonight, grace 
to walk in righteousness. I cut you away from any lifestyle that is not consistent with the character of the kingdom. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. A big congratulations to you. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Please, I'd like you to follow the ushers in one minute. They'll just have your details and you'll return back to your seat. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. For those of us standing, before we continue, there's one more aspect that I must touch and then we'll pray. In one minute, I'd like you to pray and say, Lord, you have found me. Keep me. Keep me. Go ahead and pray. Keep me. Keep me. Pray. Lord, you have found me. Keep me. Oh, yes. Now unto him who is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless. Now unto him who is able to keep you from falling in the midst of the pressures and the challenges of life. Keep me. Keep me from falling. He says, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, thine is the power, and thine is the glory. Keep me from falling, that I will serve you all my life. That I will serve you all my life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God bless you. Please sit down. Let's finish up. So there are two dimensions of hope. The first is the blessed hope. And according to Titus chapter 2 verse 13, the blessed hope talks about the return of our Lord Jesus Christ and the fact that we'll be spending eternity with him in a place of absolute rest. I wrote a song maybe 10, 13 years ago. The coming of the Lord is near and I can hear the drown of the trumpet so loud when the dead in Christ shall rise again and we who are alive will be caught up in glory to a place of rest called heaven called paradise and there we will rejoice forevermore remember writing that song was my communication I've taken God serious all my life and I want to encourage us Stay with God. Stay with God. A time will come where we will be in a place of absolute rest and peace and love forever. Where there will be no wars, no terrorism, no hunger, no issue of jam and wayek, no issue of corruption and death and sickness. And that is our blessed hope. Hallelujah. Absolutely. The second aspect of hope, we'll deal with that now. When your eternity is secured, you can deal with the quality of your life here on earth. And that's what we want to deal with very quickly. The fact that our ultimate hope is beyond this life. It's not a guarantee that we should allow the devil to buffet our lives here in the earth realm. The Bible says, having the promise of this life, uh, having the promise, uh, how did he put it now? going to get to that scripture first Timothy I, I think we'll get there we'll get there let me just skip it the second dimension of hope is what the Bible calls hope in this life hope in this life so our hope is not just in heaven alone we have hope even in this life hallelujah 1 Timothy chapter 4 verse 8. 1 Timothy media if you can help us. Everyone say hope in this life. Yes. 
if you are supposed to live 90 years old and you are 25 years now or 30 years, how many more years do you have? At least 60 or 65 years. You don't want it to be 65 years of hopelessness and misery. Hallelujah. So we must have hope even in this life. 1 Timothy chapter 4 verse 8. He said, but bodily exercise profited little. For bodily exercise profited little, but godliness is profitable to all things. He said, having the promise and expectation of the life that now is, huh? and then that which is to come. So there is a promise of the quality of life that now is. Jesus speaking to the, to the disciples said, no man who has left father or mother or land houses for my sake and for the kingdoms he said but he will receive in this life this and that and that and then in the life to come life everlasting there are issues in our life today that we're discouraged about and we must sustain the grace to deal with it praise the lord we need hope in this life to be able to achieve our goals to be able to push through the walls of limitations to be able to overcome challenges and obstacles and to triumph over circumstances i'll take it again we need hope in this life so that we can achieve our goals we can push through the walls of limitations we can overcome challenges and obstacles and finally triumph over circumstances. These are the two dimensions of hope. One is the blessed hope at the return of our Lord Jesus Christ and the other is the hope we have that assures us of victory here and now. Praise the Lord. Now very quickly, what is the basis for hope? What is the biblical basis for hope? Let's start with our blessed hope. That means what is the foundation? What is the assurance? What is the condition? What is the basis on which we have our hope? The blessed hope. What gives us assurance that what we call blessed hope is not a lie? What gives us that assurance that we will partake of it? Number one is the sacrificial and the substitutionary work of Jesus Christ. The first basis for our blessed hope, hope beyond this life, is the sacrificial and the substitutionary work of the Lord Jesus Christ that has given us access to eternal life and peace with God. Romans chapter 6 from verse 23. So the basis for my spending eternity with God. The basis for that hope that I have is the fact that Jesus died. The sacrificial and the substitutionary work of the Lord Jesus Christ that today has granted me access to eternal life and peace with God through the blood of Jesus. Romans chapter 6 from verse 23. Hallelujah. It says, for the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. And that eternal life comes through the person of our Lord Jesus Christ. So based on the substitutionary work of Jesus Christ, it gives me a basis for having that blessed hope. That truly, on account of what Christ has done, I will be able to stand blameless before the throne. Hallelujah. Number two. What gives us the basis for the blessed hope is the words and the prophecies in the Bible which we consider to be true. Revelations 21 verse 1 to 5. Let's rush please. Two major reasons why we have assurance that this blessed hope is true. Number one is that Jesus died and he has given us access. Number two is that the concept of this blessed hope has been written in the Bible and we believe it to be true. I saw a new heaven, Revelations 21. This was the revelation that was given to John the Apostle in the Isle of Patmos. 
I saw a new heaven and a new earth. So John tells us, based on the prophecy in the book, that there was truly a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth were passed away, and there was no more sea. Verse 2. And I, John, saw it. Are you seeing that now? John saw it. So he's not telling us what an angel told him. John saw it. So it gives us the basis of assurance. I saw the new Jerusalem coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. Verse 3. And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people, and God himself shall be with them and be their God. Verse 4. We're reading to five. And God shall wipe away their tears. You see where we got the song that we're singing? He shall wipe away all tears from their eyes. And there shall be no more death. Neither sorrow nor crying. Neither shall there be any more pain. For the former things are passed away. And God himself tells us in verse five. He said, and he that sat on the throne, not a delegate. He said, behold, I make all things new. And he said, write for these words are true and faithful. So we can believe it. God himself endorsed it. That the concept of this blessed hope against all scientific odds is true. Write it. He said, document it. So that those who will read this prophecy will know that there is truly a blessed hope. Are you blessed? So the substitutionary work of Jesus Christ gives us the basis for our blessed hope. Hallelujah. And then the prophecies of the Bible given and endorsed by God himself further gives us an assurance. So that is the, the, the basis for our blessed hope. What is the basis for our hope in this life then? The second dimension. What gives us assurance that the cancer will die what gives us assurance that you will build the house what gives us assurance that in spite of all of the delays and the frustration in your life you will emerge a champion what gives you assurance that the ministry that looks small today would be of global impact i call them the attributes of god there are three attributes of god that gives us confidence and gives us hope in this life. The first attribute of God that gives us hope in this life is his creative ability. The first attribute of God that becomes the basis for our hope in this life is his creative ability. His ability to make something out of nothing gives us hope. So no matter how hopeless my life is, when I look at that attribute of God, that it is still within his power to make something with no raw material, I know that there is hope for me. So when God says he can change my story, I can believe in and, and hold on to that his attribute. I preached a message, uh, I think it was last year, faith in the faithfulness of God. You can have faith in the attributes of God. I can have faith in the creative ability of God. And the Bible is full of this. In Genesis chapter 1 verse 1 to 3. Just write it. We may not project it. The Bible says verse 2. The earth was dark and void and formless. That was a hopeless situation. But then we see the creative power of God. He said, and Elohim said, light be. All of a sudden, he began to recreate the earth out of nothing. If God can recreate the earth out of nothing, it means he can recreate my life. No matter what is missing. So that revelation gives me hope. To hold on to him. The attribute of God. His creative attributes. In John chapter 6 from verse 1 to 14. John chapter 6 from verse 1 to 14. Specifically from verse 9 to 12. The entire text of five loaves and two fish. We see the creative ability of God at work. 5,000 men aside women and children, they were hungry. And Andrew saw a young lad having five loaves and two fish. And they brought it to Jesus. And Jesus said, no problem. It's not a hopeless situation when I am there. It is within my power to create. The Bible says he lifted it 
and he gave thanks all of a sudden we saw creation at work again hallelujah everyone say god has creative power because you see for many of us it is difficult to see how god will step in and change your situation because the raw material you know to produce that change has been lost are you getting my point how can i have hope that i will give birth to a child when the womb that should to keep the child has been removed are you getting my point maybe because of fibroid or something the womb was it was removed i saw it i know it's gone can i still have hope the creator the creator hallelujah he said all i need is your cooperation the creator the one who can make nothing is still a raw material for him everyone say god has creative ability so there is hope for my life i think it was here we had a testimony about someone who jam came out remember that jam and there was 100 and something hallelujah 100 and something and i think after one of the miracle services or so the person went back to check the jam confirmed he had 200 and something the creator see let me tell you the attributes of god represent the possibilities in him and the one you believe is the one that can work for you all of the multifaceted attributes of god represent the possibilities in him i believe every part of him i believe everything that he can do so the attributes of god the first is his creative ability it gives us the basis to have hope in this life number two is god's restorative ability his ability to restore what does it mean to restore to bring back to life that which is dead to make perfect that which is imperfect and to bring back lost opportunities god is able to do that god is able to do that there is an attribute of god that can restore things so it gives us hope that even when our situations look hopeless when god steps in he can restore in ezekiel chapter 37 from verse 1 to 7 just write it just write it for time's sake ezekiel 37 from verse 1 to 7 ezekiel said that he took me in the spirit of the lord to a, a valley full of dry bones hallelujah the prophet of god was taken to a valley the bible says there were very many and the bones were very dry meaning they had been there in a long time and he says son of man can these bones live again and the prophet said only thou knowest and he said prophesy speak to these bones hear ye the word of the lord and all of a sudden the bible says at the prophet's word bones began to be joined to bones i like you to say god can restore say it god can restore god can bring back to life that which is dead in my life god can make perfect that which is imperfect in my life and god can restore lost opportunities in my life oh yes everything that was lost shall be returned unto you everything that was stolen shall be restored unto you arise everything that was lost can be restored i like you to say hallelujah in john chapter 11 the entire text is from verse 1 to 44 but the part that concerns us is 17 to 27 and 39 to 44. Don't project it because of time. It talks about the story of a man called Lazarus in a place called Bethany. The Bible tells us that Lazarus, one who was greatly beloved of Jesus Christ, Jesus loved him so much. A report got to Jesus and they said, Lazarus whom you love is sick. And Jesus said, don't worry. The sickness is not unto death meaning the situation would not be worse than it already is and when the master speaks you believe him but then they return and jesus told them let's go to our brother lazarus for he sleepeth and they said ah if he sleepeth is good for him and then he came directly he said our brother lazarus 
is dead. Four days. And the restorer. He was on his way coming. And when Mary saw him, she was angry. She was grieved. And they said, Master, if you had been here, Lazarus would not have died. He said, but now I know that it's not late. And Jesus said, Lazarus, your brother will arise. There will be restoration. He said, I know. Lazarus, I know. You have already been speaking about the blessed hope. I know. And Jesus said, do you not know that I am the resurrection? That means it's not an event. It's a personality. It can happen now for you. I am the resurrection and I am the life. And he looked at a stone. Men had concluded. And he said, roll away the stone. Let's review that case. For 10 years, your father's promotion has been delayed. But he said, roll away the stone. You take a step of faith. Show me that you have hope by going to roll away the stone. I will roll it for you. Roll it. Away. If you want me to visit that case, roll away the stone. And they rolled away the stone. And Jesus stood. And in chapter 35, the Bible says, and Jesus wept. He had so much compassion. And he said, Father, I thank you because you hear me always. And I don't say this because I'm doubting you, paraphrasing, but so that these people will know. And he echoed a voice, the resurrection and the life. He sent a signal that rattled Hades, the place of death, the dead people. And he said, Lazarus, you know why he mentioned Lazarus' name? If he just said, come forth, every dead person would have come to life. And so he mentioned the one he wanted to come. He sent a word and that word came, passed through the astral realm and went and the word like a meter and it saw the spirit of Lazarus and he said, the master calleth. That's how rapture will happen. The blast of the trumpet will rattle through the gates of the spirit. And the doors of life will open. He said, Lazarus, come forth. And all of a sudden, they saw a man coming out. And he said, take off those grave clothes. Oh, God can restore. Who asked you to close those chapters in your life? Am I speaking to you? Who asked you to close the chapters? There are people who do not even confront certain issues again because they have closed it. But tonight the Lord is saying, open it up. I want to visit it. I want to visit it. I want to visit it. I gave you a prophetic word, but it is November right now. Can that word still come to pass? Is there anything too hard for me to do? I am that I am. Is there anything too hard for me to do? I am that I am. Listen, I have learned from experience and I have learned in my life that all we need to do, listen, the manifestation of your miracle does not take time. It is the process of preparation that takes time. For about 12 years, Joseph was being trained. But in one night, he slept a prisoner and woke up a prime minister. Are you hearing what I'm saying? In one night, Hadassah, Esther, for one year, she kept preparing. Listen, the fact that you are going through a period of pruning, a period of waiting does not mean God is not moving. If you think he's too slow, you will want to move faster than him. And you will complicate your journey. Wait. Wait. In one night, God changed the story of a nation. The prophet said, by this time tomorrow. Even if he said, by this time next year, it will be fair enough. But he said, tomorrow. Tomorrow, tomorrow, tomorrow. Someone is sitting here tonight. By tomorrow night, you will sit down with your hand on your head. And you'll be saying, my Lord, I didn't know I was this close. I was right at the edge of a breakthrough, but couldn't see it. That's the testimony of many people now. Listen. You are, you have come so close. You've been enduring for years. But now that you are about to break open the gates of destiny. Many of us want to turn back. I want you to know that the restoration ability of God is still in force. Are you hearing what I'm saying? I almost can't go 
I was right at the edge of a breakthrough but couldn't see. Oh, listen, let me tell you something. I trust the Lord. Something happened to us, a very interesting story. I won't give you all the details. Happened to us at the airport when we were traveling. Some things came up. There were lots of complications and it was going to affect our tickets and all of that. And you know, we were a bit concerned because I think there was issue of overbooking and so on and so forth. And we had to make sure that we arrived on time and all of that. And humanly speaking, humanly speaking, at a point, in fact, about 30 minutes, 30 minutes to the time that we eventually secured the tickets, there was all hope was lost. They told us there's no room again. This and that and that has happened. So they, they were, there had to be changes and there was no human way. I called the guys and I said, guys, this is the situation we're in now. If things get bad, this and that and that, this is worse. Let's just prepare for the worst. But God is faithful. Let me tell you something. It did not take more than 10 minutes before they wrote all of the tickets. Is that true? We're the last to, to get into the flight. Hallelujah. They were standing. I'm not sure they were even aware. You see that? And they just, they took, everything was in less than 10 minutes. God, when God is ready to stand up on your case, see, when you see God keep quiet, Papa Deboye preached a message, when God is silent, when God is silent, that's when you should start talking, praise him, give him room, give him space through your, your praise, and say, Lord, I don't know what you are doing, but I know you are doing something. Take the time to prepare the table, because it's going to be a large table. There are people who should come. Take the time. When God arises, he will scatter. And let me tell you something. When it is your season of breakthrough, I don't care whether they say curses or yokes or X, Y, Z. God will stamp everything and open the door and say, let me see the man who will stop you. For someone, if you will just wait a little longer, this is the word of the Lord. The miracle will happen before you celebrate Christmas. Just wait a little longer. The mighty God is still alive. He told you and he's still faithful. Oh, we judge him faithful. It will still happen. It will still happen. Who is God speaking to? It will still happen. It will still happen. One of our brothers here, both him and, the, and his wife, the, the ladies in Osh, Oshas and all of that. I remember when that brother met me. They are married now. They married early this year. I think around April. I remember when that brother met me. And the brother was, you know, he was sharing with me a bit about his marriage life and all of that. And I told him, I said, God will bless you and God will do a quick work. Brothers and sisters, within a short time, I was shocked. And if you see the pretty and godly lady, a combination of everything, within and without. Come on, ushers. <laughs> Hallelujah. Whereas someone has been searching without the help of God for decades. Searched all over, couldn't find nobody. I looked high and low, still couldn't find nobody. Nobody great, nobody greater, nobody greater than you. Let's sing it one more time. I searched all over. Come on. Searched all over, couldn't find nobody. I looked high and low, still couldn't find nobody. Nobody great, nobody greater, nobody greater than you. Hallelujah. His ability to restore. God can restore the job of your father. Are you hearing what I'm saying? God can restore it. He can restore it. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the quiet waters. He restores my soul. He restores my soul. God can restore every aspect of your life. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. He said, I will restore to you the years the canker worm has stolen, the palmer worm and the caterpillar. I will restore. It is within my power to restore. 
The second attribute of God. In 2 Kings chapter 6. 2 Kings chapter 6. Let's project it very quickly. 2 Kings chapter 6. I want us to hurry up because we'll pray. Wow. We must rush. From now, take up wings. We're going to rush. Hallelujah. 6 verse 1. And the sons of the prophets came to Elisha. Behold, now the place where we dwell with thee is too straight for us. Verse 2. Let us go, we pray thee unto Jordan, and take thence every man a beam, and let us make a place there where we may dwell. And he answered, he said, go ye. In other words, let's increase space. Verse 3. And, and one said, be content, I pray thee, to go with thy servants. And so Elisha goes with them. Verse 4. So they went with them. He said, and as they came to Jordan, they were cutting down wood to make the place for their meeting. Five. But as one was felling the beam, what happened? The axe head fell into the water. And he cried and said, alas, master. It was borrowed. I'm in trouble. I'm in trouble. I need help. I collected this to do the work of God, but it has landed me in trouble. Halabasi kataba. Verse 6. And the man of God said, Calm down. He said, Where did it fall? There is a God that can restore. Who is God speaking to? And he showed him the place. And he used an insignificant thing. Sorry. A stick that has no relevance. And he threw it upon. And the Bible says the iron from under started swimming until it came to the top. Verse 7. Therefore he said, take it up to you. And he took his hand. I prophesy to someone in the name that is above all names. In a way and a manner you never expected to happen. My God will show up for you before the end of this month. In the name that is above all names. I'm speaking to you. There are things that you have lost and only God can give you. I stand in under my office and in the name that is above all names. I prophesy to you no matter where that axe is it is still in the river it didn't disappear it only left you in the name that is above all names we command that axe head to float please sit down listen look at me the fact that you don't see a thing does not mean it has stopped existing it is there but it is not within your reach it is within the power of the master to call it from wherever it is. I hope you understand. How many of us can state. Um, I think that's the first law of thermodynamics. Right? What does it say? Huh? Energy can neither be what? Nor destroyed. Is that true? That means the concept of disappearance is a mirage. It only leaves your sight but it's somewhere there. The bones were scattered, but when the master spoke, they found themselves. You would have thought it's over. Hear me? Let me tell you something. Armed robbers came to your house and they stole. You do not see what they've carried, but there are many kinds of it in the earth. And when the master steps up as a restorer, you will see things in dramatic ways come into your life. And when God restores, he does not give you what you lost. He gives you what you lost and what you would have gained if you still had it. That's what restoration is. If God just gives you what you lost, it's called progress, not restoration. Until God gives you plus the balance on top. He said, who has believed our report? The third attribute of God, very quickly, that gives us the basis for hope in this life is God's ability to bring acceleration. God's ability, his attribute as a God that can suspend time. He can move beyond time. Move beyond protocols. He can expedite the process of certain things. His ability to bring acceleration. In 1 Kings chapter 18, 
from verse 41 to 46. First Kings chapter 18 from verse 41 to 46. The Bible speaks to us about the prophet. Hallelujah. A great prophet of God. And Elijah said unto Ahab, Get thee up and drink, for I hear the sound of the abundance of rain. Next verse. We'll read down to 46. And Ahab went to eat and drink, and Elijah went to the top of Camel. Watch this. Ahab ate and drink, and he started running. He had started going, but Elijah seemed to be delayed. He was here sitting. Let's watch what happens. And he cast himself down upon the earth and prayed, 43. And all of that, he told his servant, go and check until seven times, 44. All the time, while those seven times were happening, Ahab was already running. He was already moving ahead. The Bible says, it came to pass that behold, there arises a little cloud like a man's hand. And he said, go up and say to Ahab, okay, right here. Sorry, I, I got it wrong. This is the point where he told Ahab, prepare your chariot, get it down, uh, that the rain stopped in us. So, now he started running. Verse 45. Ah, kabola kataya. The Bible says, and it came to pass in the meanwhile that the heaven was black with clouds and wind, and there was a great rain. And Ahab rode and went to Jezreel. So we see that Ahab had gone very far, but the man of God was there, no help. 46. And the hand of the Lord came upon Elijah, and he gathered up his loins and ran on barefoot come on say speed a man on barefoot started running he said he ran before ahab and he caught up with him down to jezreel so it gives us hope that no matter what the delay is god can god can give speed to your feet and you will run and in one month you will do what has taken men 10 years 10 years brothers and sisters believe me it is possible when god quickens he said he will make your feet like the hinds feet his ability to bring acceleration the bible tells us how that when jesus told the disciples to go to the other side they entered the boat and they started going ahead of him is that true and the bible says he stayed to pray they were six hours ahead of Jesus. Six hours ahead. But when he got up, he started walking. And within a short time, he caught up with them. And he was about to overtake them. They thought he was a ghost. And he walked on water. It doesn't have to be the normal process. When God steps in, he can break protocols. Are you hearing what I'm saying? In John chapter 2 from verse 1 to 10. But our verse of emphasis is from verse 6 to 10. Project verse 6 to 10 for us. John chapter 2 from verse 6 to 10. The Bible tells us about a wedding in Cana. And the Bible tells us they took out time to prepare that wedding. It probably took them days to make wine. But that wine finished. They needed a miracle. And something happened. It says, and they were there six water pots of stone. After the manner of the purifying of the Jews. Containing two or three this and that. And then verse 7. And Jesus said, fill the water pots. It does not have to undergo the process of fermentation. There is a spiritual fermentation process that can happen. Come on now. Ah, yes, you don't need to wait until it produces all of those things. Are you getting what I'm saying? Hmm. No enzymes, no nothing, no ethanol, no nothing. No, no hydrocarbon, no nothing. A technology in the spirit. Fill the water pots with water. And they filled them up to the brim. Verse 8. And he said, draw it out and take it to the governor. Chemical reaction finished. Yield 100%. Are you getting my point? 100%. No waste. Nothing to throw away. No releasing of any CO2 or anything. No. Chemical process finished. Expedited time at once. And he said, draw it out and take it. Verse 9. And when the ruler of the feast tasted the wine, I, so on the way it became wine at once. And he knew not whence it was. He said, The governor of the feast called the bridegroom. Verse 10. And he said, Every man at the beginning doth set forth good wine. 
And when men have well drunk, then that which is worse comes. In other words, people give their best at the first time. But he said, why have you kept the good wine until now? There is someone here within a short time. What you will do, men will think you took 10 years to do it. But that it happened within days. One of our brothers, Mukhtar, I think he did his whole, his whole project within a short time. Because they later canceled the whole thing. And what he did within two days was greater than what he did in months. Everybody shout speed. Shout it again. Oh, God will accelerate your life. Amen. Hallelujah. Finally, before we pray, how do we activate hope? It must be activated. It doesn't just happen. Three keys and we'll rise up to pray. Activating hope. Principle number one. Total surrender to the Lordship of Jesus Christ. You want to activate hope in your life. Both blessed hope and hope in this life. It starts with surrendering to Jesus Christ. Total surrender gives you an eternal consolation. That in the end of all things, you will be with Jesus forever. I call it the master hope. The master hope. When you surrender to the Lordship of Jesus Christ, you have ultimately activated hope. Scriptural references. Romans 5 verse 2. Don't project. Romans 5 verse 2. And then 1 John 5 verse 13 talks about us knowing that we have eternal life. So total surrender to the Lordship of Jesus. Number two, how do we activate hope? The power of testimonies. The power of testimonies. The power of testimonies. Psalm 66 verse 16. The power of testimonies. Psalm 66 verse 16. Declaring your testimony activates an assurance in the listeners. The Bible is full of testimonies that many have held on to and seen it reproduced in their lives. Testimonies can reproduce themselves in the lives of the listeners. So every time I testify, of what God has done in my life, it activates hope. So someone who is about giving up just hears that God did this. And he said, if God did it, then I will still hold on. Hallelujah. Psalm 66 verse 16 says, Come and hear all ye that fear the Lord, and I will declare what he had done for my soul. I will declare it. I will declare it. In Luke chapter 8 from verse 26 to 39, just give us verse 39. Luke chapter 8 from verse 39. But the whole context is 26 to 39. The Bible speaks to us about the madman in Gadara. Hallelujah. The madman in Gadara. After he was healed, he was blessed. He wanted to go with Jesus and Jesus said, no, go. And the Bible says, Return to your house. Jesus was telling him, go and testify. Return to your house and show how great things God has done unto thee. And the Bible says, and he went his way and published throughout the whole city how great things Jesus had done unto him. So he published. Testimonies are very powerful. Let me give you two more scriptures. Psalm 22 verse 22 and Psalms 40 verse 9. Psalms 22 verse 22 and Psalms 40 verse 9. All these scriptures point to the fact that it is important for us to testify. In fact, the Bible says it this way. It says, and they overcame them by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony. Your testimony is very important. There are many people here. God has done too many things for you, but nobody knows. Nobody knows about it. Hallelujah. When they say, submit your, your names and come and tell us what God has done. There are many of us here that have striking testimonies. Many of us come for counseling and God does remarkable things and we keep quiet. I tell you, we don't share one over 20 of the remarkable testimonies that happen in this house and through this ministry. In fact, there are more people who share testimonies outside of Koinonia.
than those who share testimonies here. When you share your testimony, you, you activate hope in the life of people. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I'll never forget Steve Strings. I remember one time um, he gave a testimony. It was a miracle how he got admission in ABU. He got admission on the third list. The first list came out, his name was not there. The second list came out and his name was not there. But he had the testimony of someone who were living faith that Sunday. And the testimony of somebody. And the person testified that he went around Senate seven times. Angry and saying, Lord, this is Jericho. It must fall. And when admission list came out, his name was there. Steve Strings said, that's it. Steve Strings went around seven times. That list came out, his name was there. Because of testimonies. Listen, many of you have taken the same steps some people took and you got the result but you have kept quiet hallelujah one of our school of ministry people he he came in i think he should be around here and he came he, he sent me a text a very humbling testimony in fact i told him to come over at the school of ministry tomorrow just to share with, with our current students to bless them what God has remarkably done in his life within a short time. God has done too many things for us. And if you will not give him the glory, you will stop seeing his hand in your life. He said, if you will not glorify me, I will raise up stones. Meaning, I will only raise up what will glorify me. Hallelujah. So, the power of testimonies. Number three, and this is where we wrap up tonight. The ministry of prophets of God. How do you activate hope? The ministry of true prophets of God. Not just prophets in office, but men and women of God who stand in prophetic dimensions. Listen to me. This is, this is very important. I want you to listen because we're about to pray. All through scripture, true prophets of God have been dispensers of hope and agents of change. Men have always been God's weapons that he will use to bring hope alive and to create changes in people. Hallelujah. Joseph was the prophet of God that was sent to Egypt to preserve them. Elijah was sent to a widow in Zarephath to preserve her and restore to her what the famine had taken. Elijah was also sent, um, Elisha, was sent to the woman in second kings chapter 4. the bible talks about the wife of the sons of the prophet they were about to take her children and do trade by battle with them and the woman ran to the prophet and the prophet said what do you have in your house do this and that and that and the woman came out of the situation hallelujah in second kings chapter 5 the story of naaman the bible says naaman was the captain of the of the syrian army he was a great man but he was leprous hallelujah and when they sent him with a letter, the prophet gave an instruction. Go and wash yourself seven times in Jordan. And that was it. The scripture we just shared in 2 Kings chapter 6. The restoration of the axe head by the instruction of a prophet of God. Listen to me. When a people lack a prophetic voice when a people or a ministry or a, terror, a, a, a territory lack true apostolic and prophetic voices then hopelessness despair and doom will become their experience I'm saying this please get it I will repeat myself when a people when a ministry when a territory lacks true apostolic and prophetic voices, then hopelessness, despair, and doom becomes their experience again and again and again. I'm trying to look for a scripture that just came to my spirit. Ezekiel 22 verse 30. Let's look at something that the prophet said. Ezekiel 22 verse 30. We're rounding up right now. While they project that, I'd like you to write Ezekiel 37 from verse 1 to 7. We've read the scripture. 
the valley of dry bones it happened to the prophet of God the prophet of God gave an instruction every time you are in need of hope you are in need of change among other principles you engage in is find a true prophet of God he said and I sought for a man among them that should make up the hedge and stand in the gap before me for the land that I should not destroy it but I found none so I destroyed the land because there was no man the Bible says they are taken for a prey and none say it restore there must be a voice let me tell you something in every territory and every every society there are prophetic agents that God plans strategically they represent dispensers of hope men who God stamps their voice stamp their words hallelujah Hosea chapter 12 and verse 13 the last verse Hosea chapter 12 the prophet told us something that has become an instruction in the body of Christ Hosea chapter 12 verse 13 he said and by a prophet the Lord brought Israel out of Egypt by what a prophet now hold on it is true that God delivered the people but their hopes were shattered until a man showed up they never it is true that there was a prophecy that there will be deliverance for them but nothing happened until a man Moses showed up the moment that prophet of God appeared hope was brought back to life when they saw him he gathered them and said people begin to prepare you are days away from this captivity and you'll be out and he went and challenged that 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 gun called Pharaoh Bishop Oyedeko said prophets are territorial commanders his exact word now it may sound arrogant but it is not it's an election of grace when God calls a man and truly puts a true apostolic and prophetic man to God makes it a point of duty to back you. When you speak in the name of the Lord, he said, I prophesied, but I did it as I was commanded. And he said, hear ye the word of the Lord, spoken to an envoy. He said, believe the Lord. And by a prophet, sorry, the Lord brought Israel out of Egypt. And by a prophet, he still preserved them. The ministry of true apostles and prophets of God in the earth has not ended contrary to the popular theology that people speak it has not ended there are still men and women but you doubt their ministry to your detriment the Bible says, believe the Lord and you shall be established it said believe in his prophets and you shall prosper doubt the Lord and refuse to be established doubt his prophets and suffer for the rest of your life it's not idol worship. I know there is an imbalance where men have made themselves gods. But I can tell you, it is part of the program of God to use men to speak in the purposes and the counsel of God. When the prophet Simeon held on to Jesus Christ, he began to prophesy to him. There was a prophet as 84 years she had been in the temple waiting for the consolation of Israel. She carried Jesus Christ and spoke and she was ready to die. And Jesus walked and nothing could kill him until he gave his life by a prophet he came Isaiah prophesied unto us a child is born by a prophet he came by a prophet he was preserved if Jesus Christ needed to subscribe to the true ministry of the prophetic then you cannot do without it hallelujah we are going to pray we will pray these three prayer points and I will be prophesying from the depth of my heart let hope arise rise up on your feet let hope rise Darkness trembles in your holy light Just sing it once or twice and then I speak about lives Let hope rise Darkness trembles in your holy 
I like you to see the hopeless situation before you and sing this song to his face. Let hope rise. Darkness trembles in your holy life. Oh, it will change. Let hope. Let hope. Let it rise. Darkness trembles in your holy life. For the last time now. Let hope rise. Hallelujah. Three prayer points. Prayer point number one. Lord, you are a creator. I need a creative miracle in my life. Lift your voice and pray. Can I have some prayer people behind the mic, please? We have five minutes to pray. Lord, I need a creative miracle. Oh, I Hallelujah. Listen. Prayer point number two. Mention every area where the devil has taken anything and say, Lord, tonight, let there be a restoration. Let there be a restoration. Lift your voice and pray. Restoration. In finances. Restoration. In family. Command restoration of opportunities. Command restoration in your academics. Command restoration in your home. Command restoration in your ministry. Hallelujah. Prayer point number three. Lord, grant feet, speed to my feet. Listen, listen. Lord, before December, let me accomplish what I have not done from January to now. Lift your voice and pray. Give me speed. Give me speed. If you pray from your heart, God will answer. If you pray from your heart, God will surprise you. If you pray from your heart, supernatural 
you want to see done before miracle service this month if you believe listen if you don't have faith it's okay you can stand aside just be praying in tongues as we pray but if i am releasing my faith with you that three things you are telling god lord i hold on to hope that between now and miracle service week do it for me if you believe God, oh, lift God your voice and pray. Oh, I believe you. Oh, I believe you. Lord, we believe you. We are believers in this house. 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 You have done it before. You will do it again. You have done it before. You will do it again. We agree as a house that before miracle service, three things, mighty things, mighty visitations, you will do in our life. Three things, mighty things. We believe you. We believe you. We believe you. Pray. God will do it. 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. My God will do it. My God will do it. Lift your hands. I want to speak over your life. I told you the third key is the true apostolic and prophetic ministry. Brothers and sisters, I don't know what your expectations are. But I know that for God to have brought this message, there are people who need a miracle desperately. And it will take a prophetic word. In the name of the Lord Jesus, in the name that is above all names, if you take me as a servant of God, in the name that is above all names, I speak over the situation that has challenged your life. If I be a man of God, between now and the end of this month, it must answer to the name of Jesus. Amen. It must answer to the name of Jesus. Amen. It must answer to the Amen. name of Jesus. It must answer Amen. to the name of Jesus. Amen. I come tonight in the name of the Lord, the captain of our salvation. I come in the name of the one who is the multi breasted one who said, Is there anything too hard? And I invoke the powers of the heavens. I decree and declare in the name that is above all names lord i prophesy let miracles erupt in the lives of your people let miracles erupt in the lives of your people receive financial miracles in one month 
someone here will get a financial harvest Amen. that January to October has not given you. I prophesy it in the name of Jesus. In one month, someone will give you a gift before miracle service that no Amen. man has given you in your entire life. For someone here, you will share a testimony from home that you have never had all your life. Amen. Hallelujah. There are some of us who have been trusting God for specific things. And as it is humanly speaking, it doesn't look like you have what it takes to get it. But in the name of Jesus, may the hand of the Lord come upon you tonight. Amen. And I prophesy speed. I prophesy speed. I prophesy speed. In the name of Jesus. And every power and every force that frustrates the rising of hope in your life. In the name of Jesus, I come under the anointing of the Spirit. I challenge those powers and I command them to let you go now. Amen. The Bible says by a prophet they were preserved. I command that you are preserved. Amen. Your going out and coming in is blessed. We will not hear any report of death. Death, we speak to you. Anywhere you see one of these ones, we command you to stay clear. Amen. In the name of the Lord Jesus. And every fear of death, every fear of failure that is in you, that makes you think you will not see the end of the year. The Bible says by a prophet they were preserved. I command that you are preserved. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. The God that brought you to 2014 will take you into 2015. Amen. Thou shalt not be afraid of the arrows that fly by day, nor the noisome pestilence, or all these that wasted in noonday. I command that you are preserved. Amen. The seal of the blood is upon you. Every altar that invokes your name will invoke fire upon them. Amen. In the name of the Lord Jesus, every coven, every altar, that invokes your name or that of your family members what will show up is the fire of the Holy Ghost be blessed in the name of Jesus everything these hands that are lifted said to do I pray in the name of Jesus may they prosper those of you who are walking I prophesy that these two months will be the best time you have had walking this year in the name of the Lord Jesus thank you Jesus those who are trusting God students for where the school fees of next session will come from before miracle service you have your school fees in your account in the name of the Lord Jesus we provoke the ministry of destiny help us before miracle service you return with your testimonies hallelujah Lord Jesus we give you praise this is your first time worshiping with us here. This is Koinonia and we love you wherever you are. Please make your way to the front right now. We want to pray for you very quickly. Thank you for coming. Thank you for coming. Celebrate them Koinonia. God bless you. God bless you. No matter how far inside and outside, God bless you. You are most welcome. You are most welcome. Let's keep standing. We are rounding up. Let's keep standing please. Let's keep standing. God bless you. Keep coming. Make your way to the front. We have a blessing and a prophecy for you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you so much for coming. God bless you for coming. This is Koinonia. Hallelujah. Your life will never be the same, I guarantee you. Your life will never be the same. We want to pray and bless you. We are here every Friday. And God is doing mighty things in our midst. Hallelujah. We love you. Dearly beloved. I hope you were blessed by this message. I want you to keep doing something for this man of God, our man of God, Apostle Joshua Salmon. 
and that is i want you to keep on praying for him that the cause of the gospel may have free flow in him that he may be granted boldness to continue with his commission of jesus christ and that all provisions be given unto him as he continues in this journey of christianity and then don't forget to like this video don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you are new here don't also forget to leave a comment in the comment section and then keep sharing keep sharing abroad and let's all keep sharing jesus i'll see you again bye